Once upon a time, before everything went to rack and ruin, the Moon Realm was ruled by a beautiful goddess. But then, Little Bear, for whom the Moon Goddess had shown nothing but love, stole two of his mistress's precious possessions. The Black Moonstone and a magic pair of scissors known as Calibrus. After declaring himself Moon Bear King, he invaded the goddess's castle, smashed the white moonstone to pieces. Once upon a time, I once upon a now. This is my moon cheese, so just get to the part where I sound good. <laughs> right, uh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Wasn't everyone so very wowed when the moon goddess was obliterated? Wasn't it just great that the impressive Moon Bear King uh, 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 gave a piece of the White Moonstone to each of his generals, screwing over the moon at large? Oh, yes, the next three years were something special. Ah, yes. Now, where do I begin? He was the Moon Realm's ruthless new king, and intent to keep it that way. So night after night he spirited away the souls of children and locked them inside wooden puppets who were doomed to defend Castle Grizzlestaff. And while tonight was no exception, it would prove to be quite exceptional. Poor oh, dearie. Look, Ying Yang. Another day, another soul. Poor indeed. You're as bad as the tyrant. How many of these children are you planning to parade off to certain mutilation before you realize you're wasting your time? Why, one more and then another after that? As many as it takes for me to get my hands on Calibrus. <laughs> Meet our hapless hero, who's just blitzed back to life, firmly in the Moonbear King's clutches. Kutaro, Kutaro, your soul was summoned here at my behest. Kutaro, will you be my friend? Howls to the bitter end. Ha 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 Lovely. Another dunce who left his head in the Moon Bear King's belly. Listen, you're going to drop dead if you go without a head. And I'll be the one stuck with cleanup. Come on. Let's find something else you can use. A substitute head. What's rattling around in there? It's a head pot. Perhaps I'll just help myself. <laughs> this should do not. Hey, you're all set. Remember those head pots. They may be weird, but they flap around with lots of useful heads. But one little touch, and they'll drop their stash. You know, a new kid on the chopping block like you ought to have a couple of noggins, at least. Can't take any chances. <sighs> Another one. See, just like I said. Blast it! What am I doing wrong? Am I not powerful enough? Uh oh, look out! Quick, pick up your head now. This is extremely important. 
One false move, and those heads of yours will tumble right off your shoulders. If you don't grab them right away, their magic will fade and... No more head. So remember, if you lose your head, pick it up post haste. Oh, and one other thing. Moon sparkles. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Voila! These are moon sparkles. Collect 100 and you'll be able to magically come back to life, even if you do lose all your heads. Let's keep looking. There, the witch's bloomers. Keep your eyes peeled for moon sparkles if you want to stay alive. That Moon Bear King is always angry. Jehoshaphat! Oh, look there. You see that head symbol? Listen, every head has a little bit of magic to it. They react to places and objects that resemble them. Oh, why don't you just give it a try? Here, first choose the right head. Now, use the head's meow jig. Anyway, keep an eye out for those head symbols. Anything could happen. <laughs> Look at that. No wonder they're so skinny. <laughs> Yourself at home. Go and bring it to me. You'd better follow that fork. The witch doesn't take kindly to long waits. Hurry Watch up! that feisty fork. It's as wicked as the witch. Hey, I warned you. Remember to pick that up quick. No more heads means no more you. Pass through that shimmering gateway to proceed to now, the back of the kitchen. Make no mistake, Kutaro was not alone in his plight. The kitchen was already staffed by unfortunates whom the Moon Bear King had plucked from their beds. These children had been charged with keeping the Fickle King fed, and it was a miserably hopeless task. After all, his appetite was as vast and insatiable as his lust for power. Careful. There's this thing about fire and puppets. <laughs> all those moon sparkles, you don't want to toast yourself grabbing them.
Imagine being one of these tykes and spending dusk till dawn getting kneaded and grated, peeled and parboiled, marinated, melted, minced and mashed. Or, if they were lucky, just zesty, followed by a light grazing. Mm, I smell something delicious. The witch wouldn't have made it. Hmm, head? Aha, there's that head symbol again. See how using your head can change the world? And I do mean that quite literally. The witch, in case you're wondering, was a singularly screwy sorceress by the name of Esma Potts. You'd think someone that gifted with a cauldron would know a thing or two about cooking. And you'd be wrong. As for Kutaro's catty companion, name of Yin Yang, he used to be the moon goddess's faithful feline. One might say his current mistress was a step down in some regards. Watch out for the vegetables. In this kitchen, the cook is a cook, and the squash are out to squish. those wooden legs up to the Moon Bear King's throne room and fetch me his magic scissors? You can do it. After all, you are a very special boy. Deja Mew. <laughs> How many very special boys are we up to now? Yeah, you can keep him company. Whoop de doo! We get to go to the throne room to find the animals. Welcome to the Tower of Tribulations. But don't let a cheerful name like that fool you. This place is dripping with nasty traps. <laughs> See? You never know where a head might be hiding. Head pots, dreadnoughts, parking lots. Check everywhere. They don't say, get your head out of the gutter for nothing. <laughs>
Situation. Duck for your life before we get bowled over. Hey, still in one piece? been snatched away by an enormous arachnid. But why didn't he end up as dinner? Perhaps the spider mistook Kuturo for one of her 10,000 children. Hard to keep track of all those little darlings, even with eight eyes. to the throne room. No one has ever made it this far. The sun does have a burning temper. Ha! What did he do? I've got his precious daughter! Uh, well, of course you do, sir. And even if you didn't, your majesticalness is more than enough to eclipse the sun. Sir, I've prepared a very special room for you, my dear princess. So please, I insist. Take a long rest. Meow. What luck! He's left Calibras unattended for once. Kukaro, you are one lucky person. <laughs> There before our hero towered the most impressive pair of scissors you've ever seen. The legendary Calibris. But Calibris was bound fast by vile vines, the twisted offspring of the Moon Bear King's twisted magic. Kutero, meet Calibris. Calibris is a cut above your average scissors. He used to serve the Moon Goddess. Step forward, boy. And take your destiny now. Now that's a shame. 
chalk. <coughs> I mean, an honor. <laughs> Don't you see? Calibus has chosen you. And so Kutaro's fortunes were starting to look up. After all, he was now the proud owner of a pair of enchanted scissors. Still, it wasn't all good luck. Remember, Calibus belonged to the Moon Bear King. And the boy's first challenge was to extricate himself from the booby trap he'd just set off. Right there. That's the ticket. Wizard. See, take good care of Calibras, and Calibras will take care of you. Don't stop now, or that breeze will catch us. Ah! Who dares lay a hand on my property? My traps! How did you get out? Wait, how did you get in? You wretch! What have you done to suit my throne room? Gods! Apprehend that thief! Deftly and darkly, the grubs descended upon our trembling hero. But locked within each of them was the soul of a child, just as scared as him. That's it! Very heroic. I'll pop your head! Clean off your shoulders! Get caught, and you'll be grabified, just like the ah, rest of these poor children. I want that sticky-fingered scoundrel's head! Guards? Guards? <gasps> I'll do it myself. Of all the Moon Bear King's nightmarish magical creations, Weavers were some of the nastiest. This was Kutaro's first ever real dose of fear. But to escape the Weaver, those fears would need to be conquered. As the clash grew even clashier, the boy sniffed, sliced, and sundered with the cold realization his life counted on it. The weaver is full of souls like the one you saw before, but cut those souls free, and you can flatten this carpet for good. Success! The fell weaver was no more. With the legendary Calibrus firmly in hand, Kutaro had taken the first step of his grand adventure.
Unfortunately, the next steps had to be taken at a run, as the Savage King was hot on our heroes. Tiger! Y yes, sir. Where did that wealth go? Uh, well, he can't have gotten far, sire. He has such tiny legs. I imagine he's right around the corner. I don't want him around the corner. I want him corner! <laughs> find that thief, or I'll find someone who can! <laughs> Please, sire, your blood pressure. I'll take care of it. Would you like a back rub? A glass of warm milk? Anything? No? Bravo, Kutaro. None of the others ever made it half as far. This will be music to the witch's ears. Oh, man up, would you please? Would you prefer the grubs find you and the mule bear king yanks your limbs off? <laughs> With a flash of Calibrus, Kutaro felled the frightful monster and freed the soul of every last child in the fiend's clutches. Well done, Kutaro. The souls he freed were homeward bound. Lucky Kutaro, suckered into stealing a set of sorcerer's scissors by the witch and stirring up a tyrant's rage. Now all his hopes of escaping the castle were dashed, just as he himself dashed like mad to outrun the soldier grubs who wanted his head. Poor Kutaro, his only hopes now were calibrous and a witch of most questionable character. What cruel tricks would fate play on him next? You, you pussy-footing wussy cat! Where were you? I ought to fudge! Brownies! It can't be! Did you forget you sent us off in the first place? Yes, Calibrus chose him. Finally! Those legendary shears will cut right through the Moon Bear King's lackeys and set the Moon Realm free! Now, my brave young warrior, why don't you let Granny hold on to those for you? Right now, you wooden dogs! <laughs> what was that for? Don't you tell me I'm not your type! Gotcha! You need either a heart as pure as the goddesses, or pernicious magic like the Grizz. But all you've got is an attitude. Oh, oh nuts! You keep Calabras. You'll take good care of it for me. I smell him. That's the punch and stink of a scissor thief. Oh, General Tiger, sir. How kind of you to drop by to check on beastly old me. Uh. Oh, I just don't know anything about uh. this scissor thief, but if I see him, you'll be the first and last to know. And this egregiously foul odor must be witch stink. You are certain he's not here? Oh, yes, very certain, your Tagonese. I beg you, bring that scoundrel to justice, or I may not sleep a week tonight. Ah, don't worry. My grubs will have this whole castle locked down in no time. After all, 
we can't have anyone crashing the prison towers and making off with the knight's powers, now can we? Do you hear that, dear? Then get your hidey in gear! <gasps> the tiger's tongue had slipped. Whatever powers this knight had, they were clearly important. didn't come with stairs. Clinging to the slippery stones instead were giant living vines imbued with dark magic. Snipping, cutting, slicing through the vines with Calibrus, Kuturo scrambled up and up. Onward he must climb. As you may have noticed, there was a reason the Moon Witch framed Kuturo for stealing the scissors. The moment she marched him off to the throne room, she had already concocted a plan to take Calibris for herself. Despite himself, Kutaro was growing excited. What kind of awesome power could this knight in the towers have anyway? Not even the vile vines could still cut her own scissors. Hmm. We'll have to muse these for stairs. Just cut along the seam. Thanks to Calibus, not even the steepest tower walls could stop Kutaro. Kutaro 
sliced his way through flags, vines, anything he could sink those scissors into. Not everyone took it sitting down when the Moon Bear King rose to power. Many tried to oust the cut and bring back the goddess. One or two of them even survived. But the goddess's mightiest champions all fell, and their powers were locked away in secret, well-guarded places. Now, where do you suppose the knight's powers are hiding? Top security was tight. The weaver patrolled the smoke-ridden sky, swooping and slicing at anything that moved. These towers not only defended the castle walls when the Moon Bear King rebelled against the goddess, but during the ferocious final fight, they also went on the attack. The tyrant later converted the towering spires to a prison, which with a bounding imagination he dubbed the Prison Towers. <clears throat> the crushed forces of the Moon Goddess were detained in His Majesty's pleasure to starve, rot, and generally suffer. Only their armor remained to tell their terrible tale. Forging on the power in its Lord's dark seal, the Weaver stretched to preposterous proportions. Kutaro knew he had to swallow his fear, step forward, and keep his head. Well, well, looks like the pawn has become a knight. Why do all your problems seem to come in extra large? You found a chink in the armor. I bet you can cut through. See? I told you so. <laughs> Just your luck.
up and cut those souls free. shield appeared before Kutaro. Could this be the power he sought? Tiger! Quickly, you fool! He's going to find the knight's shield! How could he possibly know it was in there? Stop him! The Kutaro makes off with the shield or the Sun Princess! Mark my growl! Blow! Rip that bit of Moonstone right out of your mouth! Well, when I find that idiot who blabbed about the night in front of... With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. You'll recall that even after the Moon Goddess was defeated and her legion was put to rout, her loyal subjects tried to resist. Four champions, ever faithful, rose to their mistress's cause. Over a period of weeks, they concocted an elaborate plan to lead a pathetically small but equally valiant army against the Moon Bear King's castle, Grizzlestein. Did it work? Well... Onward, he knaves! The bear shall pay the price for his crimes! They were hopelessly outnumbered, but so desperately did they fight, so bravely did they broil, that the tyrant himself finally deigned to confront them. You fight well, dare I say, skillfully. But alas, <laughs> that shield will not protect you from me! Power! And that was the end of that revolt. The Moon Bear King used his dark magic to lock the four champions' powers away, and all would-be challenges to his throne were wiped from the face of the moon. This shield was a special one indeed, for within it still Sorry, the power of the moon goddess's knife. <laughs> he whose valiant struggles ended in tragedy. At last, Kutaro had claimed the knight's powers. Try those powers out! Oh, very good. Next up, Lunar Bit Parts! Okay, 
short red mouse shut and ears open. Use that shield to protect yourself. That's my clever boy. Remember, you can fend off nearly any attack, great or small, just as long as you don't get smooshed in the process. Luna Glove! Now fend this sucker off! Some attacks can be turned against the attacker. Oh. Next, try pointing the shield upward. Good. Now point the shield downward. Moving on. Luna Bit Part! The best defense is someone else's offense. And the night shield, as it happens, was specially designed to deflect beams of magic light. Which is lucky for you, because here comes a doozy! Bounces at that grub there! Yeah! One more thing, dear. The shield wears out if you use it too much, so be sure to give it lots of rest. Got it? <laughs> then get lost. <laughs> oh, look! The witch conjured up an exit. How sweet. We should hurry before her magic sizzles out. Sadly, not all the castle's puppets were having the same luck as Kutaro. Winken, Blinken, and Nod here tried to make a break for it. And got broken for their trouble. The Moonbear King's overblown guillotine was waiting to reduce all such traitors to scrap. Please, stay on your toes if you want to keep them. Looks like you need a head to get ahead. No defense is perfect. You'll find a weakness if you keep your eyes peeled. The witch said you might need to give the shield a rest. Bravo! An eye for an eye. Shimmering gateway has been swiped. Oh, meow, I remember. The king's brand new security system was installed here last week.
here the shimmering gateway abruptly ended. Kutaro could not stave off a sinking feeling that things were about to get grim. There you are, you vexatious thief. But where is the gateway? Help! Somebody! Oh, that's right. The princess is being held here. Was it the night soul within the shield, or something else stirring? A fire filled Kutaro's heart, and he knew it was his duty to save the princess. Hmm, just what is it about damsels? She's not even a lady. At best, she's a lady in waiting. Kutaro was disheartened, but his sense of chivalry would not let him leave the lady behind. She was a princess. I could really go for my own kingdom. No use moaning. A hero never leaves a <coughs> lady behind. Chop chop! Come on! Have credit. You're like a hero or something, right? Questing to save the princess? 
Why else would you have Calibras and the Moon Knight's shield? Well, you're about three feet too short and three hours too late. But thanks. Like, seriously. <laughs> I think we may have an incident on our hands. is flashing, that's a piece of the Mule Stone. Without that bit of dental work, he'd be a scaredy cat and no better. Thing my paws don't touch the ground. <laughs> You'd better try to get some air. <laughs> Keeps the dentist away. Never defeat me, boy. You runt! Keep your filthy mitts off my fan. will only hurt for a second.
The tale of Kutarel is about to end. On one of the moonstone shards. Most impressive. I knew I picked a winner. In fact, I think we're ready to team up in earnest. Who's this little soubrette? What of the Sun Princess's retinue? Where's your mistress? Like, I gotta tell you. It's not like you're anybody special, am I right? Ah! Oh, no, thought. It's the tyrant! Run for your life! Give me back! My scissors! I'll chase you to the end of the moon! This world belongs to me now! You'll never be safe ever! With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. At long last, Kutaro and his new friend Picarina were free of Castle Grizzlestein, born to safety by the witch's magic. Our fugitives needed a safe place to hide, and so they chose Castle Waxwain, the same flying palace from which the Moon Goddess once ruled. In those better days, the White Castle was resplendent, a sight to behold. But the tides of darkness had since dulled its sparkle and loosened the stone of its walls and columns. There, there, sweeties. We'll just hide out here for a spell. But, like, this is Castle Waxwing. 
Doesn't it belong to... The goddess? Yes, indeed. Although palace and master alike seem to have come apart at the seams. Silence, Ying-Yang! No one asked for your opinion! Out of the darkness and into the light, Kutaro had gone from Black Castle to White. Oh, this is more like it. No moon bear king spies and lackeys to follow our every move. Uh-huh. You've got a lot of gumption, you know that? Only one hiney should be warming that throne, and it doesn't have warts on it. The moon goddess is gone, dandelion. I'm sure the palace is delighted to have such a promising new master. Promising? Try pompous! Try shutting up! Oh, my little earth and savior. Why, you're nothing short of a hero. Come, be a good child and let me have a gander at that moonstone shot. Don't do it, Kataro. Calibrus, the moonstone, and the palace all belong to the goddess. And this magic slinging loony is obviously trying to duke you out of them. How can you say such a thing? All I want is what's best for Bob. What's his name? <laughs> Whatever. Granny's trying to explain, so knock it off! Ow! Oh my gosh! What a witch! The Moon Bear King kidnapped Kotaro's soul while he was sleeping. He does that to Earth children, and that's where the Moonstone comes in. The source of all moonlight. After the Moon Bear King shattered the stone, he gave the pieces to his generals, and you see how they shine. That's just one shot. Imagine the power I would have if you collected them all. <sighs> Could easily spare it, could go back home to her. You really mean it? It's in your best interest, too, my sweet. Didn't you say the Sun Princess was searching for the Moon Goddess? Yeah. Why? The Moonstone is a symbol of the Goddess's power. Restore the stone, restore the Goddess. This could be your big chance. <laughs> You should start in the Moonwood. General Rat has another Moonstone Shard, and you're going to get it back. I still don't trust you. You're using Kataro, and I am so going to prove it. You'll have to catch him first. Oops. Hey, Kataro! <laughs> and remember, you can tell a rat if you smell a rat. Go get him! Well, Kutaro had taken the Moon Witch Plunge, and now he found himself in a secluded grove in the Moonwood. That hag is such a... Ugh. How are we going to find one lousy rodent in a place this big? <laughs> I love this forest. One gullible woodland creature after the other. <sighs> What's going on? A splash of purple later, and the quiet, unassuming grove had transformed into a gloomy, reeking landscape of evil, dark horribleness. Once I darkify the Moonwood and offer it to the Moonbear King as a tribute, I will be on Easily Street. <laughs> So that's who did this, General Rat. Now, bamboo generally tends to be upright citizens, but these storks have grown fans and wanted to chow down on Kutaro.
If I might share a bit of moon lore, have you heard this one? Once upon a time, there was a lineage of radiant moon princesses who began their lives as tiny babies inside bamboo stalks. But then, one of the princess's souls had a little mishap and wound up in a bamboo stalk on Earth by accident. Sort of the opposite of young Kutaro here. Forget about Kataro. How can you bring up radiant princesses and not mention me? Do your job, please. How dare you question your narrator? I'm omniscient. If you know everything, then you know who I am. Or wait, are you saving that for surprise? Whatever. So what happened to the bamboo babe who got stranded on Earth? A Koinobori streamer? And is that a panda? It's playing with the bamboo. That's so adorable. Hey, look! Bamboo shoot! Koinabori are an old tradition representing the carp as he swims his way up the waterfall to become a dragon. They're symbols of growing up healthy and strong. I know that, but who put them up? Oh, let's not get mired in details. Aren't you in a hurry? Purple goo had already fouled up the Moonwood's pristine water supply, transforming the local carp into ferocious demon fish who took none too kindly to trespassers. Hey, you don't suppose the rat is hiding out upriver at the top of the waterfall? Kutaro arrived at a bridge that arched a truly impressive waterfall. Holy Cascade! Do we really have to climb this thing? Keep climbing and don't look down!
No. Is this cool for the streamers? Check out the cherry tree! And it's in full bloom! This is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Darn that rat! He ruins everything! Before their very eyes, General Rat transformed the cherry tree into a baleful twist of briars. Now that Kutaro and Calibus have excised the darkness, the old cherry tree could go back to his usual agenda, standing tall, looking blooming radiant. In the mystical cave behind the waterfall, our hero stumbled magic? upon a strange scroll that could only be in Kutaro acquired the ninja's powers. Nin nin. Nin nin. Ninja! Splendid, Kutaro. Now you have the knight's powers and the ninja. Who turned out the lights? Luna Candela! Funny? That usually works. Kutaro, use the ninja's powers to light up the cave. Just throw a bomb in the stupid lantern. It's still dark. Do it again. Good. Just a little brighter now. Throw a bomb in from above! Oh. What's your aim, dear? That's a boy. Finally, we can have some lighting. Wait! Now it's too bright! Blast it! <laughs> you can see all my warts! Here, aim for that bomb symbol at your feet. All right, 
one final test. Hit me with a bomb. In! <laughs> once more, tadpole! I certify you ninja proficient! In! <laughs> the moon would swine! Time to spruce up the spruces! Whoa! Holy sacrilege! Oh, the horror! Rats squeaked with satisfaction at his handiwork. The hallowed shrine of the forest gods had been transformed, corrupted. So Kutaro snipped the ghastly lantern down to size and returned the shrine to normal. <laughs> the Tory gate guarding the shrine had been sapped of its power by sorcerous chains. Kutaro used Calibrus and the ninja's powers to fell his enemies and rekindle the shrine's power, one step at a time.
And now, it's time for a fire sale! Suddenly, the giant gate was transformed into a weaver. One of the Moonbear King's faithful servants, who seemed quite intent that Kutaro joined the club. Kutaro, did you see that? Stick a bomb on that glowing taiko drum. to the other side. Use the taiko drums that pop up to leap across. What a fight it was, as Kutaro dodged scalding flames and swinging deaths and leapt from Tycho to Tycho. The shrine's weaver had been vanquished, and the souls of the children it held captive returned to earth. Calabras! No! My scissors! I don't want to go back to me! <laughs> What is going on? But this had better be important, or else. They what? Brett is supposed to be guarding that forest. Talk to him. Yes, he would say that. The buffoon. The entire. I'm beginning to think the problem with my generals is that I have any! Hmm. Hmm. Will this be 
makes a conspiracy. They steal Calibus. They escape my castle. Now they conveniently find the Moonwood. Do you think someone else is pulling the strings? Right. Keep a close eye on them. I shall take matters into my own claws. Never fear, you beautiful brute. You just need to find their ringleader. And then, what you do, you can tear them into tiny and threatening little bats! Ah! Ah! Put toxin production on hold. Kuzuro has been spotted in the Moonwood. Then the rat has failed in his task. Say the word, sire, and I will strike your enemies down. Very well. Crash the life out of Kuturo, no matter the cost, and you will be well rewarded. The reward is in the crushing. Watch as I devour all that stands in my path. With the help of Calibrus, Kuturo defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kuturo! The souls he freed were homeward bound! Ever since the goddess had vanished from her throne, the denizens of the Moonwood had hardly slept a wink. But then they received a visitor, a single smartly dressed rat. Gather round, the rat said, and produced a purple elixir. This tincture will cure all illnesses and stave off the tyrant's magic. And he offered to sell it to them for a reasonable price as a neighborly gesture. The Moonwood's inhabitants were overjoyed and relieved to have such a good friend looking out for them. Well, the Moonwood is a mess, all right. But where's General Rat? There's still no sign of him. At least it's nice here. Finally a place on the moon that's not crazy. Hey, Kataro. Even if you clobber that rat and get the Moonstone Shard, you better not give it to the witch. I mean it. Seriously, that witch? She's just using you so she can get her grubby hands on the Moonstone. Or worse. <laughs> oh, yes, Daddy. Give me the Moonstone. And your brains. Who knows what she'll do with that kind of power? You should leave the Moonstone with me. I can keep it safe. What? You wouldn't dare. <laughs> that dipsqueak is even more shaky than I am. Can it, Crone? No comments from the imaginary peanut gallery. Be honest, Kataro. Do you still not trust me? Because I think I could tell you something that might change your mind. Ready for this? My daddy is the sun. I know, it's like tragic. I'm a princess, I'm royalty. Then the Moon Bear King hits me with one lousy flash of magic. And suddenly, I'm just royally tiny. What? What's that look? I'm serious, I'm the Sun Princess. 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 What? Hey! Princess. And 
so uh, with the vows of uh, friendship renewed, Kutaro and Picarina, princess of the sun, continued their quest to find the shattered moonstone. Kutaro and Picarina were still hot on the rat's tail when they reached the edge of a dim and darksome lake. Oh, please, someone, anyone, help! Save me from my predicament! Mayday! Mayday! They heard the shrill cries of a damsel in distress. Cedrus had been one of the Moon Realm's top tourist attractions, until, of course, it got turned into a creepy, toxic, gut-turning pit of stink and rot. Living in the lake were adorable little creatures known as the Kapagairu, but the rat's toxin had triggered a most unpleasant metamorphosis, and the few Kapagairu who dodged that bullet now faced extinction at the hands of their psychopathic relative. of yore, the moon goddess herself took holidays to the lake, but you wouldn't know it now, unless her idea of a day off was frightful fishes, freakish frogs, and phantasmal vistas. Once, this very taiko drum boomed and blammed as the Kapagairu fested their festivals. Now, the tune had changed.
Can you just picture it? The pristine water, like glass, nestled in a vast kingdom of green. It was the perfect getaway for two young lovers. The grass by the lake, soft upon the buttocks. <clears throat> well, let's just say it was a very memorable honeymoon, even for a man full of memorable stories. But those vividly luscious days are lost, like frogs in a blender. When you get as old as me, and the days grow as weary and predictable as they do, you too will be longing for grass on your buttocks. You mark my words. Kutaro pressed on, unflinching, across the dangerous lake's mossy rocks and aquatic leaves, slashing at the petals on the wind as if composing a wordless poem. Would our hero sloshed, noting with every sploosh that the rat's purple poison had been splotched all over the place like putrid paint. Once. I was beautiful once. Could you shut up once? It almost looks like one of those paper ones. At the heart of Lake Cedrus, Kutaro. <laughs> Curse that rat! Look at what I have become! I am a tragedy in the midst of unfolding. I hate to pick on the old trout, but aim for that brainless head of hers. Beautiful! Says 
the dimwit who ate her children. Go on, Kataro. Blow her head off again. Cataclysm is upon us. <laughs> A very good day to you, sir and madam. What an honor it is to meet the one and only mother and father Cedar. <laughs> Aren't you polite? And well spoken, too. Make yourself at home. You're the talk of the forest, don't you know? They're all raving about that. Lixo, what's it you've got? Ah, yes! The elixir! It cures any ailment. <laughs> Thank you. 
you are both still so juvenacious. Surely you are having no need for such physics or interventions. <laughs> oh, listen to you. When you've got as much mileage as us, you start to develop certain, well, issues. is a little F-A-T. Ah, I see. But you do not seem so plumpy to me. I'm not the one of us with the problem. Catch my drift? <laughs> Indeed I do. I shall make your wife swim here and shuffle again. You're catching his drift. Yes, madam. Do you? Do you smell that? Uh, why, uh, 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 yes, madam. What is that fragrance? It's not me. Guess who it is? Saying no more. I can make your husband's crayon smell as fresh as the cool breeze. Treachery lay bare. Rats sprayed Mother and Father Cedar with a revolting violent gloom. Silly shrubberies! Your forest is belonging to the Moon Bear King now! A few well placed bombs should blow all that goop off. <laughs> I am slashing prices! Thank <laughs> you. 
choices. <laughs> Misses too. <laughs> How daring of you! He said he would bite off my head if I did not corrupt the moonwood. I, I, I am meek and powerless and have no time left to obey. Oh, how sweet. The poor little rat. We never even considered him might be a victim to him. Rotten moon bear king. No respect for middle management. But that's, that's just, just our, our opinion. opinion. You, don't you don't have, have to, to punish, punish the, the creature, creature on, on our behalf. behalf. Oh, what kindness! What mercy! Oh, I am touching deeply, truly. If you let me squeak by, I will give you whatever you ask. You need only name it. Well, how about that, you know, the Lixima call it that's supposed to help with the missus's F-A-D problem? Yes, the elixir. We've tried everything to cure my husband's pit odor. Nothing works. Just take a whiff. Then I've only got a surprise for you! Come on, wow! And welcome to the Rat Race Shopping Channel! Whoa! What is going on? Mother and Father Cena! How would you like to be getting your hands on this Plum Miraculexia? Getting the stinky pits in old age? Never to wait. Well, uh, uh perhaps. Too much chunk in your trunk? Never to fear. Oh. With just one gulp of plum miraculous here, you can kiss the problems goodbye. Ever wonder how the Moon Bear King got so strong? It's plum simple. Dear. Curious why the Moon Goddess was so beautiful? It's a plum secret. Dear. Guaranteed by the Mooney Mage Administration or your money back. Oh. oh. Oh, but it must cost a fortune. It does. But today is your lucky day. For a limited time, we're offering a 90-day free trial. It will not cost you to die. Not one dime. But you had better act now. This offer ends as soon as our program is over. Grab that phone today. 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 Would you cut it out? By the way, Kuturo, maybe you could do me a favor. Do you think those 
scissors of yours could lop a few pounds off the missus. I said enough! With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. General Snake's body coursed with venom, and the Moonstone's power had rendered a mere whiff of it, the deadliest substance in the solar system. But the Moon Bear King found such reckless power repugnant. The unlucky snake was locked beneath the Black Castle and forced to produce a toxic brew. How the serpent cursed his fate as he waited patiently for his chance to be free! Unfortunately for Kutaro, that horrible moment had arrived. Go, Snake! Obliterate the whole Moonwood if you must! Just destroy Kutaro! Slithering scourges the Moonwood! Help! Kutaro, you have to stop that snake! Wait! Hold the horses! I am a bystanding innocent! Ah! Kutaro! Come back! Look out! This way! No! Snake! For crying out loud! I am on your side! It's me! After his narrow escape from the jaws of General Snake, Kutaro tumbled to a stop at the tip of the serpent's tail. Come on, Kutaro. Let's go wrap on this reptile's head. this tragedy? Was it rapid and reckless industrialization? Lax forest management? Inadequate environmental laws? Perhaps we all need to take a long, hard look at... Um, hello? We already know Snake's toxin is responsible. What story are you telling? Kutaro dashed along the length of Snake's undulating body, skipping over spines, blowing off a scale or two, plowing past poison, cutting through clouds, and wasting a few waves of sand.
It was the spitting image of Earth's own architectural wonder. What secrets lay within? Tomb of an ancient moon pharaoh? Perhaps a malicious mummy just waiting to wake from its slumber? General Snape's toxin had already killed off a third of the Moonwood and would soon reach Mother and Father Cedar's haven at the heart of the forest. If the toxin reaches the Cedars, it's all over. We've got to whack the snake now before the whole Moonwood dies. with some new scenery. Snake, clouds, desert, more snake. Ugh. Whoa! Shoulders? Does he have shoulders? Anybody? Oh, come on! Where is the stupid snake's head? All of a sudden, the stupid snake's head came into sight. with Kutaro and Picarina and into the endless contorted bowels of the foul fiend. Well, we're alive. But look at all this toxin. One wrong step and it... <laughs> Help! I cannot swim! Please! I know my digging is up! I... I, I repent! Please save me! <laughs> You had this coming. Look at what you did to those poor folks in the Moonwood. I know. I'm full of the remorsels. Just tell me what you want. I will do anything. <laughs> Good. Kataro, jump on his back. The rodents are ticket out of here. <laughs> Whatever snake had lunched upon earlier, it came floating along now in the form of broken bones and brains. Even these would soon be digested and absorbed. <laughs> I am melting! I am being digested! Silence! Oh. Please, I... Ow! I'm not liking the taste of my own medicine. <laughs> It's in my eyes! Ugh. What is this trickling up my nose? Uh, put a sock in it. Kutaro rode General Rat down the serpent's slimy channels, grateful for the first and last time that his conveyance was full of hot air. Help! Oh, please, help! Never fear! Pick a Thank you so here. much! I shall never have fun to clutch it! Holy cow! Did you see 
see that? The ungrateful little... just croaked on us. You monster! <laughs> uh, please, Master Kutaro, throw the wicked pixie in and save me instead! Show some compassion! From tail to testins, gut to gullet, Kutaro had floated his way up snakes. They had just passed the creature's throat. Wouldn't be long now. had been watching Kutaro's adventures through a magic mirror within the White Castle. That's a boy! I picked a winner, all right. You see that, Yin Yang? We're one piece closer. But the Moon Bear King had a mirror of his own, and was, shall we say, enjoying the show considerably less. First tiger, then rat, now snake! How many generals <laughs> does it take to lick this brat? <laughs> ah! Curses. First I am made snackery of, then I am made doormat. This rodent is most unpleased. <gasps> My lead, Moonbear King. <laughs> Rat, where have you been? You betrayed me. Be 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 betrayed you? Perish the thoughts. I merely had to trick Kutaro to gain the upper paw. And, and once I had him in my sights, a pow, right on the kisser. Really? That is very bold of you. Come closer and tell me more. Yes, sir. I think you will be most impressed. <laughs> Wait, sire. I... <laughs> Cannot we put this all behind us? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't lie your way out of everything. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. With the snake's third piece of the moonstone in hand, Kutaro schlepped himself onward to the shores of a vast ocean, the Moonshine Sea. It was a dreadful realm full of pirates and monsters, and frothing up its waters at the moment was a roiling rivalry between Captain Gaff, pirate master of the Jolly Lamum, and Generals Pig and Sheep, who were vying for the captain's riches in the name of their king. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yo ho! Another fine haul, me old salt. Aye, the moon shines shady hours now. We'll not be cowed by pirate nor monster. Ah, ah. It's all thanks to the Moon Bear King's sparkly prize, you all. Check it out, Katara. Those are moonstone pieces. By the by, me happy hearty, have you seen the wanted posters? For that blagged totoro. Hey, <laughs> big Look at the reward. If we catch this swamp, we'll be swimming in swag. <laughs> Way anchor. Smartly now. A vast pig. There's not a cent to be had if we can't find him. Think of the time we might waste. And the electric bell. <laughs> you be right again. We'll need one smashing scheme to catch him. <laughs> Keep it down. Arr! How dare you pour one without me, a scurvy bacon bit? First pig, first serve. Quick, Katara. Now's our chance. <laughs> Slowly, stealthily, he stole his way closer. The two generals were three sheets to the wind, but Kutaro could not risk waking them. The moonstone shards were just a few inches from his fingers when... Oh, boy! It's a trap! <laughs> that scallywag Kutaro fell for it! Yo ho ho! The Moon Bear King will heap riches on us now! <laughs> Our hero had fallen, quite literally, for a ruthless ruse. And now he found himself wriggling around in the darkness. From the briny smell and lurching floor, he knew he must be trapped inside a ship. Release me, you horse walker! Ha! Not the larcenous barnacles I was expecting! Well, ha <laughs> ha! Hoist high those chins, for ye have just liberated Captain Gaff himself! <laughs> Kutaro spied a hook, that of the dread moon pirate, one of the goddesses of the four champions. Only Calibrus can cut through, lass! Scissor me timbers! The real Calibrus! <laughs> well, look who's obtained the pirate's powers! Let's use them to commandeer this ship! Luna Dribble Switch! There! See the golden hook on the left of the helm? Use your hook claw to grab it! Once you've snagged your target, keep yanking on it! Too hard! Too hard! Ah! Uh, Milady, you are beautiful! Hello? Taro, please do something! <laughs> well, um, as you can see, you can move anything that's got a hook. Try snagging this wrench. Good yank will dizzy your foes long enough to finish the job. So, get to the deck, no excuses! Avast! Milady, I must have your name. They call me the Moon Witch. <laughs> Esma Pop. Esma Pops! Ah! 
A treasure truly worth burying myself in. Look at all these coins! Is this the treasure vault? Are you trying to die wealthy? Jump! In the next room, they found another mountain, no, ocean of gold. But to Kutaro, these riches were just another obstacle to surmount. The question was, how far could he get with a puppet's body, a few hand-me-down heads, magical scissors, a knight's shield, ninja bombs, and a pirate hook? Hmm. Farther than most. I think he wants us to pick one. Okay, that was weird. We must be right under the main deck. Get out! We locked you in with a treasure! I, but a goddess, intervene! Return me ship! Or swim with the fishes! Never! Find his keepers! Why? After them, Kataro! We have to get to the Moonstone Shards first! Generals Pig and Sheep had been using Gath's ship to capture marine life and test out a malevolent magical oil. against the dust of the hall. Mano Arr Randomly, a rogue shark ruptured the deck, causing poor Kutaro to tumble back down to the lower levels. You think the captain is okay? Okay. 
Below deck, more sea creatures were being held captive and subjected to unspeakable experimentation. Gunshots and clangor of cross swords issued from above deck. Our little hero raced through the ship's bizarre interior with all the result he could muster. Keep firing, you powder wetting milkmaid! The last click as you check. <laughs> Fritter that away, limp loins! The ship rocked, and seas churned as Gaff cornered the treacherous generals. Enough foreplay! Mayhap we should cut our losses, Pete! Graven curse! Our turn, Kataro! Wave after wave, the violent sea unloaded its fury upon the Johnny Lamb. One oft overlooked fact about the Moonshine Sea is that it contains vast quantities of pepper along with the salt. No, no, it's true. Part salinity, part gizontite. No doubt more than one failed freebooter marooned on a desert island has docked his boots and dunked and dined on nature's condiments just as a pattern. It's a tragic story, really. One that should be told more often. <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> All right, that's enough science.
here, lad. He earned it. Come on, mighty. Let's go. They want up the mast. <laughs> Prepare to die, Captain Goof. Ah, suck on some seawater, you milk feeder. What? Ah. Try me for toys! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Avast! Desist ye dogs! You knock me off! That's it! Eat more! Ooh. Did it work? A noble try, Swab, but you've left me yearning for more! Get off me, me putrid monster! It's to sink your booty! Begad, there seemed to be no heights to which this mad melee would not climb. This is so getting out of hand. Oh well, we have to get those moves on shards. So let's buckle up and buckle down. Ah, fat face! Ah, fat face! <whistles> fat face! <whistles> ah, fell them! Kutaro clambered up the creaky, clamorous mast as the wind batterfanged back. I get lost, sheep! I get lost, sheep! I my spot! I my spot! Ah! Those two generals are hopeless. Good thing you're not stuck with an annoying partner, right? Carry this! Ah, you frosts be rusty! <laughs> First, have on this, you foul beef eater. Hmm, I prefer fish. Have a kitten. Oh, thank you. What's this? Hocus pocus, duck, duck, goose. Or like dove. But enough games. Have at ye. There must be something. Anything! Ow! Are you trying to fleece me? Ye can't run forever! Whoa, 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 whoa. Got him! <laughs> be gat! Begoniers! Oh, we spring bones! <laughs> <laughs> so long! Ah! Keep running, you cowardly cold cuts! Kutaro was far from solid footing, and even the slightest jolt would send him splattering down forthwith upon the mildewed planks below. Careful! Watch your step! Kutaro had to get an angle on the situation as he leapt his way from platform to platform. Whoa! Oh, that gave me a heart attack! Whoa! 
Check out the bling on that mast. Wonder if it's real. Fake. You can't trick a lady like me. Egg. I'm keg, matey. You're not having a barrel of laughs. laughs. Uh, puns aside, Captain Gaff had had a field day with sheep. Enough swords had been run through the keg to make a pincushion blush. How the heck is he not shish kebab by now? One more skewer and it's gotta be game over. Poor Pig wasn't having much better luck with his battle. Ha <laughs> ha, lame. Ready to surrender? I can do this all day. You'll not live out the day. <laughs> what? We call for a little help. Ready? Aim! Ah! I didn't say fire! Get back here! Trouble had materialized on the horizon and was making Swiss cheese out of the Jolly Lamb sails. Holy holes! We could be next! At this rate, the sails would soon be more air than canvas. Hard to starboard! Rack the oars! Aye, steady as she goes! Uh, wait a moment. Do you even know what starboard means? What? I just wanted to say it. The cannon sails were certainly taking the wind out of their balls. I mean, the winding balls were taking the sails out of their wind. Oh, whatever. Whatever is right! Kataro, don't panic or anything, but we need to clear out of here! Thanks to Picarina's perspicacious advice, Kutaro managed to only half freak out. Flying cinders meet flammable sail. Kutaro was caught in a combustible death sandwich. Come on! Hurry! As the sails burned down, they sent hot air spiraling up, which added even more oomph to the fire. Kataro, you have to keep moving! Really, it was a sort of a race, except instead of a checkered flag, Kutaro was getting waved along by a toasty, char-spangled inferno. Now, you scurvy chickens, be out of runway! <laughs> Ready to feed the plankton? <laughs> No! Pig! Ah! Pig! Stay with me! <laughs> you can't die without paying me back! At least take out some life insurance! <laughs> Hoops off me treasure, ye dog! Ye can settle your accounts in the next world! <laughs> Yo ho! So, we've a weaver on our hands. Kudaro, me lad, I, I let you have the honor. You mean the hassle? As he faced the Weaver Pirate atop the Lamham's mast, Kutaro could feel a wrathful animus pulsing through his new pirate hook. Its previous owner clearly had a score.
As he faced the Weaver Pirate atop the Lanham's mast, Kutaro could feel a wrathful animus pulsing through his new pirate hawk. Its previous owner clearly had his to settle. Jolly Lamham's Jolly Roger was a sign of independence, a declaration of skullduggery to the open seas. Only one man could have weavified the skull and crossbones and taken over the ship, and it wasn't Winnie the Watts' face. We'll show that tyrant. Today he's gonna fly a white flag. Kutaro was running the Weaver ragged. Someone somewhere along the line had replaced our scared little boy with a fine young hero. With that, Kutaro laid the Weaver flag to work, freeing the souls of countless children and wresting the Jolly Lamon from the clutches of the cruel Moonbear King. End of the line, you bilge-sucking livestock! I'll see you to Davy Jones! But first, I'll have back me treasure along with me ship. Zoinks! We'll never give it back! Not even a piece of a piece of eight! Gold and silver be a heavy burden when you're sinking. <laughs> Captain Gaff's sword darted like lightning as he crushed pigs' buckles and fleeced sheep's philanthropy. A burst! Me treasure! That's money, ye raven doubloonatic! Uh, could we please avast forward to the part where you cough up your moonstone shards? Uh, never! We'd so to be shot, right? Ahoy! Moby! What the? Jeremy Timbers! Hey! That's cheating, you scurvy... whatever. Darn it! We can't let him get away. Captain, is your ship submersible? But of course, me beauty. When a lass wants to submerge, Captain Gaff and the Jolly Lamb Ham are happy to oblige. Really? Oh, you're the best! 
shouldn't take more than, say, three days. Ugh, you are so not the best. We'll do this the hard way. Deep breath, kiddo. Oh, man overboard! Again? And so, with the footprint of urgency firmly impressed upon his behind, Kutaro was off to the foul abyss of Davy Jones's locker to bring pig, sheep, and their vessel, the Moby, to justice. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Down in the depths lived a plethora of mind-numbingly mystical creatures who happened to like their freedom. So, as you might imagine, they and the god of the sea didn't exactly crack open the champagne when the moon bear king took over. Well, the tyrant knew a pack of unruly sea monsters could be trouble, so he ordered generals pig and sheep to pollute the moonshine sea with magic it transformed the sea god's servants into dastardly, greedy creatures that devoured everything in their path. As our brave little heroes dove deeper, they found themselves in a world of darkness where the water ran black and sunlight was a distant memory. What is up with this ocean? I'd say I've never seen anything so gross, if I could actually see. In time, the two arrived at an ancient and secret palace at the bottom of the sea. Within it dwelled a gargantuan god whose strength had been all but sapped by the tyrant's horn. Where are we? Are you okay? Seriously, what is up? What is up? What is up in the underwater palace? Get to work. 
if I join your musical number again. Kutabo, he is the hero of the moon. On his way to send the Kraken to his tomb. But will he win to say it's not too soon? Kutaro was on snack, uh, excuse me, on track to finding the Kraken and stealing back the God of the Seas Trident. It was a worthy cause. Picarina could picture the clam bakes already. Hey, we're not in this for the seafood. We're in it for some big fat moonstone sharks. Oh, I, I mean, we're in it because it's like the right thing to do, yeah? Nice try, darling. The God of the Seas squid carried Kutaro even deeper into the Kraken's briny lair. They had plenty to contend with between a smack of freewheeling jellyfish, treacherous spikes in the terrain, and rocks sharp enough to shave them. As he went deeper into the trench, Kutaro noticed the marine life was getting just a little bit more freaky. Just then, a ferocious fish with a built-in headlight and a nasty set of gnashers decided to crash Kutaro's cruise. It's an angler fish! Kutaro was in hot water of his own. One after another, he was beset by murderous deep-sea menaces. I love crab! Oh, but I love everything! The menu was tearing Kutaro apart too, but he fought on, hoping to reach the Kraken soon. The jellyfish, as it turned out, were on the good guy's side. Sure, they didn't know Kung Fu, but they were masters of just sort of floating there, which made them perfect stepping stones for Kutaro. At long last, Kutaro reached the ocean's darkest With sunlight... Giant anglerfish incoming! The oil slick had worked its tricks and morphed this fishy fiend into an impossible size. The 
battered remains of a sunken ship lay on the ocean floor. A squadron of squid squiggled solemnly nearby, as if paying their respects to the souls the records made. This mast looks ready to teeter over. Sheets goopy oil had done a number on a legendary kraken, transforming him into a demonic butcher who chopped up the local marine life, gussied up their corpses, and then devoured their flesh raw. Oh, that's horrible. Completely immoral, I say. Find it on Kraken's menu! Don't step on the wrong sushi! He's trying to trick you!
It will make the ocean blue again, and coral pink, and seaweed green, and every starfish orange. What rhymes with orange? Tried it rhymes with orange. It rhymes with everything. It rhymes with everything. Every stands in Scissor wielding hero, thanks to you, the moonshine sea has regained its former splendor. You have my deepest gratitude. Thanks to you, thanks to you, the sea is back to. Shut up, Kutaro! I would like to present you with a party gift. I have filled Calibus with a new power. One I am certain will make your journey easier. The god of the sea placed some of the trident's power in Calibris because he believed Kutaro could hew out a better future. But would he part the stormy seas of destiny or invite new storms of his own?
With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro. The souls he freed were homeward bound. Who needs catamarans or jet skis when you've got a ballistic squid? Kutaro had a new sense of purpose as he rocketed towards his enemy's stronghold, Crab Claw Cove. This hideout once belonged to Captain Gaff and his swarthy band of sea dogs. But just like his ship, it had been lost in the battle against the mighty Moby. The island's namesake. A claw-shaped rock at its peak had just poked into view as Kutaro and Captain Gaff reunited for one last battle. And this time, the clincher was sure to be a pincher. Beloved hideaway, and how I miss her. Feast your deadlights on those smooth sands, those supple curves, those clammy crevasses. Look smart, me buckos! We're going in! Fine work, Kuzero! When it comes to impromptu mornings, I prefer a box of wedge. <laughs> All right, fishy, let's see you out swim the jolly lamb ham. Fire the long tongs! Going to slip away, hey? Hold the depth charges! <laughs> if you want to sink that badly, Captain Gaff will gladly oblige. Release the charges! Zoinks! <laughs> Son of a biscuit eater! We're taking fire! Is Captain Airhead trying to blow us up too? Oh, get up, Kataro! We're about to sleep with the fishes! Kataro! I see you've powered up Calibrus, my sweet. Try cutting that! I said cut the fish bones! Thick skulls won't stop gnashing your scissors! Snip once and time it right! Stop! See how Calibrus change colour? Make another cut straight after to fly farther and faster than before. It's all in the timing. Snip, snip. Got it? Then see if you can reach me over here. Potential, which is good because this ship is going to sink. <laughs> You'd better find a way out. Meanwhile, I'll be catching some sun. Ta ta. Meanwhile, the Jolly Lamb was still lambasting our hero mercilessly. A dead end! But I bet we could slice through that sticky stuff. The whole of the Moby's interior was lined with a spaghetti-like tangle of pipes. to cut in a circle. Take your time. Gotta make sure you do it right.
Captain Gaff's salvos were doing quite a number on the Moby, outside and in. Does that Nubble even care if we're in here? The Moby had turned into a deadly inferno. The engine was ready to blow at any moment, and if that didn't get Kudaro, the seawater flooding in certainly would. Swabs, you were sinking, and now you be falling out of the sky. I marvel at your spontaneity. I'll marvel you, Tricorn Shirt. How could you wail on their ship like that when me and Kataro were still inside? <laughs> Watch my ship lock. <laughs> ah, this bodes ill, me hearties. Lady Luck has cheated, old Captain Gaff. Why? What's the problem now? Crab Claw Cove be a night impenetrable fortress. The outer cliffs repel even the tallest ship, whilst the castle walls above deter the most able climber. And let's not even speak of the twisted trail that leads to the peak or the countless cannons to thwart our progress. Aye, we'll have a hard time extracting those scallywags now. Hey! We basically have no way of going after them. Ha ah, ha ha! I said no impenetrable, but Captain Gaff knows the ins and outs of his oldest mistress. <laughs> Observe. Now that's a big gun. I calls him Long Tom. He can reach so far up the island, she won't know what air. Now we're talking. Let's unload on that beach like there's no tomorrow. Kudaro, this be a two-man job. Kindly assume the position. Huh? Wait a second. You're not gonna... Fire! Kudaro rocketed out of the cannon with a deafening roar and hurtled towards Crabclaw Cove at obscene speed. This is so not cool. Ah, Crabclaw Cove. The claw-shaped island was once home to a fearful band of... Aren't you the cutest little Krabby Wabbies? Uh, a fearful band of Krabby Wabbies and... How oh, would you stop confusing me? A fearful band of pirates in the service of Captain Gaff. That was until General's Pig and Sheep moved in.
Kitaro, Pecorino. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to steal back the Moonstone Shards from Agents Pig and Sheep. This message will self-destruct in... Oh! Hot! Huh. Smooth. No, don't! <laughs> what on the moon? Hey! Check out the stump! Doesn't it look like an octopus? Banana peel. Can't pig and sheep pick up after they eat? <laughs> Little did she know the banana peels were a trap. Oh my gosh, do you think? Good thing you warned us. The grey pipes plastered all over Crab Claw Cove's inner sanctum made it look like it was designed by some sort of wacko steampunk marine biologist. Welcome to Hotel World Domination. I guess this is where Pig and Sheep built their stuff. How did those klutzes do it? They didn't. You see, the Moon Bear King had another general, one slightly more adroit when it came to matters of a technological nature. Thanks, but it was a rhetorical question. Heads up! Watch it! Whoa! Hey there, Spikey. Didn't we see your pals back on the pirate ship? Between the cannonballs, crumbling paths, heaps of swords, and falling powder kegs, the fortress of Crab Claw Cove had proven to be a tough wench to tame. Wasn't this Captain Gas place? You'd think he'd have built an easier way in. Enemy operatives have breached the CCC. Take Robocrab Mark 1 and eliminate them before it's too late. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, since when are they the good guys? Sorry, I sort of nerd out around robots. Okay, can we get on with it? 
Crabclaw Cove was where the generals had stashed their most amazing secret weapon yet. Kutaro was in for it now. <laughs> the fools marched right into Robo Crab's lair. <laughs> Central hatch damaged. Catchy snow crabbing. Punch the legs. Hurt in the legs. Engage flight mode. Roger. Engaging Robo Crab flight mode. You don't play fair. Oh, that is so unfair. Fear not, Robo Crab. You can still stop him with a tractor beam. Roger. Activating tractor beam! <laughs> What's the big idea? We've got enough! Nail it with one of your- Oh no! They're beaming you up! Not Robo Crab, you can still stop him with a tractor beam. Roger, activating tractor beam. <laughs> oh, no, we no, she's no. gonna blow. Fire erupted from the primary engine. Danger, Will Cravenson. Danger. Stay on him. I don't care if we have to drag Picket Sheet out of the flaming wreckage. Someone was cutting through the thick plumes of smoke and closing in on Robo Crab fast. That's right, it was Kujaro, slashing furiously with a mighty cannon. The first! Stay away! No! Be chance to what up that squippy and claim the reward from itself. <laughs> I'll tear ye limb from limb. <laughs> How did ye block that, ye swamp? <laughs> A 
what lovely fireworks, each a flower of spots growing in the garden of our hearts. Don't you think, Captain? Ah, but who has time for flowers in the sky? <laughs> when the flowers below be of such varicose beauty, oh. tis you that I wish to pluck tonight, oh. my amour. <laughs> And thus ends our tale of how the fetching moon witch and brave Captain Gaff found true love and lived happily ever after. The end. How oh, dare you write an ending without me? This is my story. Curse you all. I'll teach you to make a fool of me. All of you. Especially you, Kutaro. I'll string you up if it's the last thing I do. It seems the Moon Bear King wasn't quite ready to live happily ever after. No, he still had lots of unhappiness to go round. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Kutaro's journey led him westward to the moon's wild waste. General's bull and horse would be waiting on that the moon which had been plain. And speaking of plains, these were downright unwelcoming. Night never fell on the wild waste. Sunlight scorched the red earth and torched poor Kutaro as he battled the blistering wind. His wooden body crackled and snapped. He felt like a matchstick waiting to ignite. Soon he would go sunny side down. Kataro, straighten up. When Daddy gives people the look, he hates when you act all droopy. Now that they were on Route 66, it was bite the bullet or bite the big one. Kutaro felt the stare of unseen watchers, cacti who lacked eyes. Bleached skeletons with a bone to pick. Trees as petrified as he was. And disarmingly large monoliths. All were eager to add one perishable puppet to their ranks. Come on, wake up! You'll die if you don't keep moving. Kataro! Kataro! Hey, what's that? Kataro! It's a car! We got wheels! <laughs> Let's hit a ride! See you on the finishing line! Oh, dream on you, cow! I'll teach you to look at red horse in the mouth! Oi. Show me your moves, you dopey Jenny! Taxi! <laughs> oh my gosh, how rude! Wait a second. That was bull and horse! After them, Kataro! The two hot rollers had left the wild waste even wastier than before, carving a gruesome canyon deep in the earth and turning the cacti whacked up with one putrid blast of their dark exhaust. Well, shoot! Come on, hustle! You want to become cactus fertilizer? Try it on. 
Totoro made his way up the canyon, desperate to elude the cacti. of Earth that began to tumble toward Kuturo. Domino! Oh, it's always the same. Whoa! What's up, Prairie Dog? Oh, he's even cuter supersized. Do we really have to go? Listen to you, young lady. Do you really think it's right to abandon your mission based on transient needs and impulses? Where is your sense of purpose? Where is your sense of ambition? Where is your sense of humor, okay? Would you just stay on the other side of the fourth wall, please? I am the fourth wall. And what was that fiasco back there with the crab, Robo Geek? I was creating dramatic tension. And anyway, we're talking about you! Some Z-list voice actor. Oh, look! He's digging! What do you think he's gonna find? Yes. And so our great hero blazed onward alone, by himself. Toto Solo, with no one else with him, least of all a pixel. Let's have a big round of applause for our lone wolf. What? Are you writing me out of the script now? Hey, careful you don't fall. The magic of the pirate's hook allowed Kutaro to reel in the whole rock face at once. Kutaro used Calibrus to cut through the torrents of gravel, shrugging off the boulders that threatened to crush him. What new challenges awaited him? Our lone wolf blazed onward. He's not alone! I'm right here! Of course you are. It was just a figure of speech. More like a figure of doing it on purpose, jerk. Confoundedly enough, this particular dinosaur fossil was lacking a head. How very strange. What vagaries of nature could have led to this enigma? Let's find out together, shall we? Uh, no thank you. What? 
in the bag. My bag, more luck! Oh, it moved! The Moonbear King's magic? Then this has to be... Locked within the skull was the soul of the wrestler. The last of the four champions of the moon. I don't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got a gate crasher. About time, Cootie Face. I thought you'd never find a wrestler's powers. I think you deserve a little reward. Come closer, child. Pots with a taunt. I now, stand on the box and body slam it. You can slam it there. You see how a handle popped out? You can use that to push or pull things. Now, bring the box to me. I... No, 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 they can't see their living lady. Move it to the centre. That's better. Now, kabam! Nice ring, isn't it? <laughs> but just a little cramped. Now, step aside. Here comes the Esma Witch Drop. So, you want to learn a special move? Just get up really high before you slam to put some real oops in it. Now. Aim for me. I can take it. Luna Cactosa! Take a good look at me! Take it easy! That really hurts! <laughs> you can't even touch me! I win! <laughs> The General's Rampageous Rivalry had reduced this small town smack in the middle of the waste to absolute shambles. But a new Vaquero had moseyed into town. My Grubs gosh. were waiting for Kutaro the, the moment he slipped in through the saloon's second Tara, story window. Can you fix up the buildings? Otherwise, we can't get down the street. Horseplay was shaking up the buildings along the road, not to mention the good folk inside. The nerve of those two! Hey, are they in detention? Oh, I hate detention. Let's bring them. Oh, 
one kill. <laughs> Free at last. There's still one more. What's the holdup? Wait! Don't put that one back yet. There's an order to these things. cover on the other side. the road. Hope you've got a bright idea. What? Are you taking their horse feed?
my moment, you stupid cudsucker! Again, Bull and Horse had eluded Kutaro on the outskirts of town, and taking their place was a twin revolver touting gunslinger who looked eager for a duel at high. Just Kitaro! Body slam that fire! Fighting back the smoke signal! decided to step up his game. Gunslinger properly wrangled and mangled, our hero continued his search for the gem. Now's our chance! Looks like Bull and Horse made a pit stop. <coughs> this is it, Kataro! <coughs> <coughs> Bull and Horse's eyes locked with our heroes. The air was so heavy with foreboding, you could cut it with a knife. So, Horse Face! Kiss my checker fly! Please! I can run suckers around you eight days a week! <laughs> what has just happened? Kataro! With the help of Calibrus, Kuturo defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kuturo! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Would you believe Bull and Horse were once happily married? He was easy, she was breezy, and they cared for and cherished each other. Until, that is, they were given moonstone shards, and well, trouble in paradise. Bull grew brawny and boastful, while Horse's gait and ego alike gained frightening momentum. Of all the Moonbear King's generals, they could have been an unstoppable pair. But instead, they fell to petty squabbling and name-calling. 
Meanwhile, Kutaro was still stinging from his treatment at the hands of Mr. and Mrs. Livestock. He knew sticks and stones could break his poor puppet bones, but he couldn't put a name to what he felt now. Those arrogant beasts hadn't even given him the time of day. He felt like a nobody, and that was tough medicine to swallow. Kutaro, what's wrong? You look blue. What's that on your face? Check this out! It's you, Kataro! Wanted! Dead or alive for the dastardly theft of Calibris and the Moonstone! Approach with extreme caution! Whoa! Look at the zeros on this bounty! Holy smokes! They're plastered all over the place! You must be famous. No, infamous. Big time. Maybe if you were taller, or like grew a mustache or something. Oh well, don't sweat it. Kutaro, what's wrong? Hey, wait up! Was it something I said? Kutaro was on a mission now. His pride had been wounded, and beating the bull and horse was the only band. -aid. Our young hero was like a different person. He hunted down the generals with a newfound fury. Those two could be halfway across the moon by now. <laughs> like the view loser. You got out of my face! <laughs> Catch me if you can! <laughs> How dare that stupid steer block the road? That's cheating! I can't believe you let drops for me, you creep! I could have avoided it! What's with those bites? And why are they riding alongside us? Like a burger for the meat. You mean like a bun? That put some fuel in my tank. Dang, he gets good mileage. Despite having finally landed his first hard-earned blow on General Bull, Kutaro still hadn't made a flip on the couple's radar. All they cared about was their race. Hungry fire chased after Kutaro with the ferocity of a wild animal. Fire chased after Kutaro with the ferocity of a wild animal. What's with all these cacti? I finally lost her! Not that I had any doubts! Let's knock this drunk cat over and send Bullhead for a loop! <laughs> Nelly! Well, we lost Bull, but we gained a way forward. <laughs> Looks like Bull's having gravity issues. Let's overtake him! There's another drunk cat! Let's stop him for good! Another oil slick! 
The blast had left Route 66 on the verge of collapse. Yes, the ground looked ready to do that thing, where it crumbles just inches behind the fleeing hero. Look, it's Horde! I will win! I have to fight! No! Oh, she looks ready to keel over. Let's put her out of her misery. Look what you've done, you moon! I was seconds from winning! How dare you make me forfeit the race! I was about to beat this bovine! Oh, yeah? Well, now you can fight Kataro instead! <laughs> fight this pathetic pipsqueak! <laughs> oh, maybe when he's out of diapers! What's the matter? Chicken? <laughs> what? Oh, what? Did you say? <laughs> Gonna run back to your chicken coop? How dare you call me a barnyard animal? <laughs> we barbarize you! First one to the train station wins! Whoa! Hey, wait just a darn second. You're supposed to duel, not race. What's wrong? Throwing in the towel? Why even try when you know you're going to lose? You're a loser, Kutaro! They should call you, I'm gonna lose, Taro! Wait, wait! My mother doesn't follow through, Taro! <laughs> Fine. If you want to race, we've got one condition. You have to wager your Moonstone Shards. If Kataro takes first, you cough up the family jewel. My Moonstone Shards? They're <laughs> real tiny. I'm not that stupid. You should be honored just to gallop with the big girls. Oh, I see how it is. You're the one scared of losing. Guess you better pack it in now, you pack animal. I wouldn't want to take any chances. You might end up buying the farm. <laughs> Fine. The moonstone. You got yourself a deal, sister. But when this is over, I'm going to wipe that smirk right off your face. Runners are off. Kutaro bursts from the gates, but in front is General Horse. It's General Horse. Behind in second is Kutaro No Head. It's Kutaro No Head. He's clearing the obstacles and closing ground, but General Horse is keeping him a few lengths behind. And did you have to crash my ride? And now Kutaro pulls his eye to try and cut in and take the lead. A carrot! Up! Up! What a jump! Kutaro is on General Horse's back. A horse is a horse. Of course, of course. But this one's a train that's using a horse. If she's gonna cheat, then I'd say let's gallop on down this filly and show her what's what. of speed. Look at Kudro go. He's going for broke. Jump again. Kudro on the inside. Kudro on the inside. He's showing no mercy with that whip as he closes the gap with General Horse. No mercy. What a whipping. A cattle car that carries lions! No tigers or bears? Oh my! An elephant too? Oh dude! A rainbow! If you didn't know any better, you might have thought Kikarina was on vacation. Excuse me for living in the moment.
And we're back in the race. Dynamite is raining down. Bones are being magic wrapped to life. Cacti, scorpions, kudros jumping and sliding through the steeplechase from hell. He's on the passenger car now. And what a better way to soak in the moonscapes than from the lavish seat of that classic locomotive. <laughs> Sound the whistle, stoke the curls. Today, you're riding on the Horsey Hotel Express. Hello! No, we're not at the zoo. Life and death ray speaking, right? Kutaro had run his horse across the wild waste, caught up with a locomotive, ridden on the back of said locomotive. And boy was his butt sore. Look out, Boulder! Another! Bleached bones like sharpened fangs, scorpions, Kutaro's horses on the bit as he shrugs off every danger. Between slicing through smokestack blooms and dodging flaming coals, Kutaro had a busy time of reaching the front of the train. Yes, finally, Kutaro was aboard the finest train this side of Neptune. Oh, but I wouldn't give to be in his shoes. Uh, horseshoes. Now, let's have a look at the Horsiental Express's award-winning dining car. Lacy white tablecloths, the thick, juicy stains. The completely annoying train geek. Kutaro is right on General Horse, right on her. He's in the straight, the post is in sight. Follow that cold smoke, kid. Ride like the wind, you're almost there. Go for home. You can do it. Smashes through the tender behind General Horse in Raven Her. She throws the emergency brake as Kudaro overtakes her. First place, Kudaro. First place, Kudaro. Yeah, who's your daddy? Looks like the town's celebrating. Thank you. Thank you. Was not a real victory. And if it was, it was over her, not over me! After all the dismissals, Kutaro had finally gotten horse to throw down, and it felt good. I'm gonna snort you to kingdom come! Say your prayers. Don't stand in front! Get behind her! Only the latest high-tech gadget. The... Now! Let her have it! No! That, that hardly scratched her! Hit harder! It's not so easy to put a dent in top-grade Moonmine steel. My car uses an MLS construction, and it's been running for more than 30 years. They're 
Turn our six! Turn it around! I am trying! General Horse's internal pressure was steadily galloping toward the boil, and trying to contain it did terrible things to her temper. Had she consulted a doctor earlier, this terrible tragedy might have been averted. Yeah, help her let off some steam. One more slam ought to do it. No, it won't! <laughs> Defeated horse, but I'm still no. Look out! Run! No. No. I challenge you to a duel in the Colosseum. Kutaro hmm? and Picarina hurtled into the sky and far, far away. The Far, far away they flew. Kutaro and Picarina flew far... No! And they landed. <clears throat> they landed... No! Don't land already! Oh, hey! Wow! I'm okay! Kataro, you got all your parts? Come on, quit messing around. Look at this place. Like, where are we? I mean, donde estamos? With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. The answer, as it turned out, was south of the border, Loco Caliente. Posters promoting our protagonist's punch fest against the prevailing persona were plastered around the Colosseum premises, which were packed with patrons. Who would emerge victorious? Challenger or champion? The wages were flying as the stadium seating grew rowdy with drink and dance and song. Tacos out of that cow head. Oh, 
You think it's funny? Better watch it. Katara's thrown down against half the animal kingdom, and he's still undefeated. Kodoro, the fight will soon commence. Make haste to the Coliseum. All right. This is it. Everybody keep cheering Katara on! Trying to rub a dub dub. Call back later. What? Curses! I am trying to rub a dub dub. Call back later. What? Meteors? Has been broken? Preposterous! Am I the king of fools? Why can't just one of you defeat Kutaro? Hmm. Yes, of course. Good. And. You're sure he'll win? He had better. Make sure our fail-safe is in place. Good. Yes, 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 monkey. I have your bananas. Now go! <laughs> A festival was underway in the village and a whole host of decorations hung between the panoply of buildings. General Bull said the Colosseum, but I can't even see down the road because of all these houses. How do we get through? <sighs> the houses in the village seem to have sprung up out of sheer necessity, with one domicile unapologetically standing atop another. You think we could move the buildings around? There's no handle to pull. Kutaro wrestled with one house after the next as he made his way through the village. Endless tangle of houses made for a mind-boggling labyrinth. Which way is the, the Coliseum? The haphazard scaffolding looked ready Since to I tip know. over. I vote for us. Shadows were intent on taking Kutaro's life. Okay, it's a picture of a balloon. I love balloons. Look at them all, destined for greatness. It appeared the village had sent a brave challenger into the fray. Wish him the best. 
and fight. Too bad. He should have just waited for the real hero. Maybe the owner might object. To what? Getting the penthouse view? Off the billion houses, our hero started to wonder if the Colosseum really existed. Oh, uh, look at these balloons! They're covered in spikes! giant piñata. This ultimate party favor was packed with candies and toys and drew stick-wielding tights like flies to honey. They can't reach! Children just love it when a piñata breaks. Aww, they're singing! The children's joyful song echoed up to the highest reaches of the sky. Kutaro had carried a tune but this was the first tune that carried him. Off and off he went. As he reached the top of the buildings, he was greeted by a brilliant display of fireworks. Oh, nice! Can we stop and watch? I love fireworks. Oh, they're so pretty. And a little romantic. <laughs> It's a time for today's main event. This one's going to be a slobber knocker between the reigning champion, General Bull, and newcomer, Kutaru!
In the red corner, you know the champ. You will love. Good goddess almighty! A brutal ambush! Business is about to pick up! Wham! Kutro is sucking right. each other like government Kutaro's pride, but now all that was forgotten. His honor restored. <laughs> Good news, sire. Kutaro's force has grown strong. Strong enough to defeat a whole mountain of bull. Kutaro's. What? Have you caught a cold? Speak in full voice. Never fear. We are still one move ahead in the game of evil. Kutaro's doom is assured, Moonbear King. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a tidal wave of cheering washed over Kutaro, and so deafening was the roar that he failed to hear the crack as Monkey hatched a plan. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound.
a short time ago in a galaxy far from far away. With the power of Calibris and the might of the four champions, Kutaro had won victory after victory against the vicious Moonbear King. More than half the moon had been freed, and the noose was tightening around the tyrant as his moonstone shards were taken and his advantage slipped away. Kutaro's deeds of daring do had become a beacon of hope, and the beleaguered peoples of the moon were on the brink of rebellion. The flimsy soul of a selfish boy had become the adamantine soul of a hero. Kutaro, may the forceps, <coughs> I mean scissors, be with you. Kutaro and Picarina were winding their way back to the wild waste when they got lost in a dense forest. And as dark clouds settled in overhead, our duo found themselves longing more and more for the light of the sun. We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> hey, maybe we should, like, turn back. Yeah, I mean, getting lost would be a total bummer. Okay, back to the entrance. But alas, neither one of them had the foggiest idea from whence they came. Ah! Taro, you're not supposed to chicken out. You're the hero of the moon, the big cheese. You took that bull by the horns and won, right, champ? Surely Kutaro was strong enough to wrangle a couple of trees. Look, you've got a moon to save and a sun princess to please. So man up, kiddo! As if he had a choice. The only road was forward, or whatever direction they were facing, so our hero steeled himself and pressed on. The pale blue light of the Earth, his only guide. The Headless Horseman had driven Kutaro and Picarina right into the labyrinthine clutches of the Snacker Boss. What's this face doing in our face? I'll do a little recon. That's one chubby pumpkin. Looks like a bomb ought to light it up. And then there was... Ah! What's it doing? Um, our light just rolled off. Hurry! Even the candles are pumpkins. I think he's got the jitters too. Drink our drink, smell my feet. We'll cough up some heads. Another one? Kutaro and Picarina continued their trek through the dense and licorice black sugar shadows of the snacker boss. Hmm? Something's coming. Guess it hates the light. There's a cliff ahead. Am I on recon again? There's pumpkins and there's plumpkins. Wanna light them up?
dark. Hurry up and get in the light! Kutaro fumbled through the murk, shredding sweets as he went. What a waste of good dessert. Don't worry, my dear. The stage crew will eat the leftovers. The who? Chocolate bars! Good! The light got rid of him! And who said pumpkins were just for smashing? I'm afraid of ghosts. But ghosts scare me out of my britches! Uh, that's nice. But if you really want to thank us, tell us where the heck we are. Pardon? Oh, well, you're all uh, on the outskirts of Halloweeville. Cozy place two of the Moon Bear King's generals come along and did stuff to the local pumpkins. Did stuff? That's right! They made it so snacks sprout all over them. Huh. That explains the candy and cookie trees. Oh, I hope you didn't all eat them. Because the townsfolk that did all turned into half of monsters. Just desserts, you might say. <laughs> oh! What was that? Wolves? Ha! <laughs> so I had dogs. General Dog. He's all that stops us from running for the hills. Oh! Come on, Kataro. Let's whip that puppy and take his moonstone shard. Whoa! They're out in droves. How are we gonna get past him? to move when the fireflies do. Ooh! Eerie howls echoed through the snacker bosk's shadowy branches. Uh, uh, don't worry, Kataro. I've got your back. Ooh! Our hero blazed on like a flaming pumpkin in the darkness. No chasm could razz him as he could pass the darkness. He was going to get through this forest and put an end to General Dog.
the howls grew closer and closer. It was a giant. No, the giantest of pumpkins. This pumpkin. Oh! What's sealed inside this one? To keep the snacker boss dark, someone has surrounded us most of its fire. Yeah. Oh, finally, this place will lighten up. Whoa, whoa. Just outside the bosque, General Dog stood watch like some great Stygian hound. You are firewood. So this is General Dog. Huh? Wait a second. He's on a leash. A candy head. Uh, what leash? You know, maybe we should just ignore him. Yeah, let's go. Woo, woo, woo. Wait, don't go. Do you mind? We're in a hurry. All I want. Ooh. Is for that nasty moon bear king woo, woo. to scratch my ears. Ah, uh, scratch this. Woo, woo, woo. Ooh, are we playing? Oh my gosh. Come on, Kataro. Woo, woo, woo. Please, just for a minute. No way. Woo, woo. Look at me. You know, I think I'm a cat person. Woo. I am big and strong. Ooh. If you beat me, Ooh. you can have my moonstone piece. <laughs> We'd get that anyway. Ooh. I know you love me. Uh, let me count the ways. Whoa, whoa. Oh boy, she does. Could this quite possibly be the dumbest animal I've ever seen? What do you say, Kitaro? Should we throw him a bone? Whoa, whoa. I love bones. I think it's safe to say his brain his weak point. Give him a flump! Woo, woo, woo. Shall not pass. 
room? No, not that. Copy the map mask. Let's go for a room. Slugger. See, that was just the tip of the Kataro iceberg. Hey, a moonstone shard. How many are we up to now? I can't keep count. <gasps> the house was a sugary sucker punch to the appetite. Their eyes started at the fluffy whipped cream snow on the milk chocolate shingles and wandered longingly down crispy, crunchy cookie walls until they found the sticky temptation of the candy windows. Their minds were still toying with thoughts of macaroon molding and Baumkuchen banisters when their eyes wisely decided to shut up and let them smell the darn thing. Oh my gosh, yummy! Do you... Do you think they would mind if we took a bite? We haven't eaten in, like, minutes. No, 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 must not eat delicious house. We need to get the moonstone. <laughs> I have you! What's up? Gizarro, your belt is spewing gas! Flawless oh, victory! <laughs> it was a trap. Our champ had stopped to chomp just long enough for the chimp to make a chomp on him. With the help of Calibrus, Kuturo defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kuturo! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Behold, Halloween Veal, where every ghost worth his sheet loved a good scare. If you manage to spook someone out of their treats, then by George, you've done your job. However, that was before the moon goddess vanished, and sly General Monkey played a real trick on Halloween Veal. He ousted the town's mayor and the ghastly mayoral family from their haunted house, converted the building into a laboratory, and once settled in, Monkey began doing things to the town's produce. You see now the awesome scrumptious tastiness of Monkey's pumpkin creations? The first bite is heaven, but then the cookie crumbles! <laughs> the moonstone shards are back in our clutches! The Moon Bear King will be most pleased. Uh, you'll pay for this. Uh, give those back. Wait, I would be mad to give up this kind of power. <laughs> Think of the experiments I could conduct. Not while I'm around. <laughs> round indeed. I, Monkey, shall use these moonstone pieces in my experiments. Now make like a banana and peel. You creep. Nobody cracks jokes like that on lives. I'll get you! Just as soon as I can find my toes. Oh, me ouch! Now that is perfect. <laughs> oh, you poor plump dears. What a shame on you! The stuff in your piggy little faces! You can yell us later! It's horrible, those stones have the power to restore magic and memory, but now you've messed everything up! Kotaro, you are a special boy, especially stupid! Stop lecturing us! Change us back to normal if you want our help! Ooh, but magic can only undo magic. You may have been charmed into eating those sweets, but the sweets themselves were no smell. You pig out, you get fat. That's just nature. 
Wait, what does that mean? You can't fix us? We'll be chubs forever? I said magic can't fix you, dummy. You got yourself fat, now get yourself thin. But it can't be that easy. Oh, nothing is ever easy. And I'm going to make sure this isn't. Ow! <laughs> Stop it, you have! Big sweaty Ow! porky times are wasting. Oh, all I need is the moonstone and Calibrus. It's all I need. You know you could just give up and stay an ugly, pathetic witch forever. Yang Yang! <laughs> Which is the one pulling the strings? This awesomely juicy morsel should come in handy. <laughs> General Monkey's tasty trap had turned our poor hero into the Lord of Lard. From shrimp... ...to blimp. And did he Roll ever? Out. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. let's just say he raced into a slimmer future, flab jiggling in the winds of change. That's it, Kataro! You're getting thinner! Kutaro had plenty of pounds to spare as he demolished rock, bridge, and foam. His globe-like body was a microcosm of his struggles, as if some mini Kutaro was slicing away with Calibrus at the layers of fat. Your greatest enemy is yourself. All of human history can be traced along our wasteland. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. Call it fatocracy. <laughs> to narrow the divide between the fats and the fat moths, Someone had the bright idea to ration food out. It was called communism. Want bread? Line up. Don't be like those unhealthy fatocrats. But communism ultimately lost out. No five-year plan could wean people from the temptation of all that caviar and vodka. It was hard work. But Kutaro shed the pounds. Having doffed his mantle of corpulence, he could once again squeeze into his place among them. At the end of his pot-bellied, uh, stout-hearted slong through self-imposed emaciation, Kutaro had wandered right into Halloween veal. Oh, this is much better. I can see my toes. Give me candy, or die! Um, I don't think that's how Halloween works. The pumpkin monster attacked with vicious geezers of cream filling. At this rate, Kutaro and Picarino would be drowned. If we get the cream off the roof, we might be able to plan the house back to normal. I feel sick. Ugh, I haven't seen this much projectile vomit since my sorority days. Ugh, get me out of here! See the juice? That's where the pumpkins bounce. You'll never escape. He's screaming the mountain! Fix them so we can keep going. No safe haven for our dashing duo. Halloween be. I will crush you all! Oh no! The ground's collapsing! Hurry, or you'll end up face first in cream! 
There was no safe haven for our dashing viewer. Halloween Veal was clearly out to get him. Ah! Is there no escape? Dentists, Kutaro and Picarina avoided almost certain dashing. I'll chew you yet! Are those gooey places cavities? Bet that would hurt if you attacked them. Now! Chuck a bomb into the cavity! I'll trap you forever! This time, the pumpkin monster kept his jaw clamped shut leaving neither nook nor cranny to crawl out of. They were trapped. Let's just get away from the team! Now this looks like a nice mushy cavity! Slam it to pieces! You monsters! I guess the moral here is, think about what you eat. Otherwise, your food might kick you in the teeth! Actually, we get gobbled up a lot. Tigers, snakes, whales, and now a pumpkin. We see more action than a gastroscope. Remember, cavities can lead to bad breath, gum disease, loss of hearing, and death. Don't forget to make a dentist appointment. Loss of hearing? That's a new one. Here we go! Hello, cavity! <laughs> That was experience talking. Battered cavities had only worsened the pumpkin monster's depravity. He was done savoring. This was one meal that needed to die and be forgotten. Let's finish the 
spending the rest of your days as a pumpkin monster. What is a pumpkin but a manifestation of the predictability of everyday life? My soul will never be free. That's crazy talk. We just freed you big time. I am Nebula, Nebula Oblongata, the existential wanderer of the cosmos of the soul, and yet prisoner of the fleshy coils of my impending adolescence. You're a ghost? So is everyone in Halloweenville. People insist I am the mayor's daughter, but they are deceived by illusion. They do not realize I am a ray of blazing light in a galaxy of darkness, cast out by the gods and saddled with this cage you ordinary fools would call a body. Um, that's nice. Well, if you're the mayor's daughter, maybe you've seen this guy, this monkey guy? He totally swiped our goods and we want him back. Yes, the simian is conducting experiments in the haunted house in the center of town. The place I called my literal home. Well, Kitaro, let's go. Wait! What? <gasps> oh, don't do that! General Monkey has transmogrified the haunted house into a laboratory. It is a fell crucible of tin and iron, a portentous labyrinth of tubes and tinctures. To set foot inside would be to bring down the hammer of your own doom. Unless, of course, you enter through the unspeakable door. Unspeakable? You just spoke it. So, I take it you know where the door is? Yes, it was my literal home. Then could you, uh, show us? Impossible. Monkey stole my key to the unspeakable door. Of course he did. But not the mayor's. Okay, great. So, where's the mayor? In the one place where the haggard robes of mortality can be shrugged aside, upon the golden bridge that separates life from death. Right. And translation? The graveyard. With a flash of Calibrus, Kutaro felled the frightful monster and freed the soul of every last child in the fiend's clutches. Well done, Kutaro. The souls he freed were homeward bound. Before his stint as a scientist, General Monkey was a brilliant mime who made everyone laugh. But being laughed at always rubbed him the wrong way. Determined to better himself, he studied hard and used his evil inventions to get in the Moonbear King's good graces. His piece of the Moonstone made him the smartest creature around. Smart enough to build Castle Grizzlestein, and smart enough to turn Halloween Veal's pumpkins into wickedly tempting snacks. Now, within his laboratory in the haunted house, he was combining Kutaro's seven Moonstone shards with the one that General Dog already had to create an abomination unlike any the Moon had ever seen. You know, moon folk used to flock to Halloween Veal just for the thrill of it. Of course, once the Moon Bear King rose to power and real terror took hold, tourism took a nasty, nasty plunge. The ghost town turned into a... well, you know... Huh? You see? This place isn't so scary. Now, how exactly are we supposed to get in? Oh, mister? Hey, mister, could you unlock the gate for us? Ah! It, it's open. Here they were, in the scariest corner of the scariest part of the moon. Fortunately, not even the most horrible of deaths could deter brave Kutaro from his search for the mayor. After you, 
Yes, Kutaro mustered all his courage and faced the dangers ahead. <clears throat> I said, Kutaro summoned all his courage because if he didn't find the mayor and get the key to the haunted mansion, the Moonstone Shards would be lost forever. Clearly, Kutaro needed a little persuasion. Oh, get your hiney in gear, you chicken! Dauntlessly, which You're means not, not in a scared open. way, Kutaro strode into the graveyard as an owl's plaintive hoos <laughs> issued from Don't the mouth of the trees. Our hero felt a pair of feline eyes staring at him from the black, glowing, burning holes in it. Someone had dug unpleasantly dank tunnels six feet under. We're not alone. We're not alone! Ghost! Cut it! Cut it! Hurry! I ain't afraid of no ghost! Look! There's a path! Come on! There go the No! The spider went gummed it up! Get it open. What was that? What was that? And then, in a cruel trick of hyperbole, Kutaro found his way blocked by a coffin of epic proportions. Yeesh! Let's leave this... Uh, uh, just that! Okay, a lot of that! Left! It's no good! You've gotta... It's no good! You've gotta... Slam from higher up!
helpless hands burst from underfoot, ready to drag Kutaro straight into the dark depths. Oh, nasty! Who's that kid? It was one of the three tights Kutaro met back in the Black Castle's kitchen. Virgin Bride? You're not even human. Oh, damn. I hate this stupid moon. Oh, no one ever... I hear something. There must be something in here. Check out the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Murder it. The ghost transformed into a swirl of darkness and effortlessly dodged Kutaro's attacks. Then, suddenly, a ray of sunlight bounced off the earth and pierced through the dark clouds above. Of course! Light! Dark things hate the light! Think you can find some way to bounce it at him? Reaper Weaver swung his deadly side, but Kutaro wasn't ready to give up the ghost just yet. Bravely he fought back, using the light shield to douse the fiend in hurts, cooling light. his wicked powers to block the light pouring in from Earth. Stay hooked and jump over!
With a macabre monster vanquished and the graveyard conquered, Kutaro was ready to continue his search for the mayor and the key to entering the haunted house where General Monkey waited him. Silly girl. Daddy knows what he named you. Susan's a wonderful name. No, Susan is so plebeian. You can call this earthly vessel, but you can never name my soul. My name is Nebula. Nebula Oblongata. Wanderer of the Cosmos. <laughs> I think we need to look into cancelling your library card. Susan! Susan! Stop it! Kutaro's efforts had galvanized the ghosts of Halloweeville, and now they rose as one. Armed with torches, they closed in on the haunted house, determined to have the monkey's head. Kill the monkey! Smash his head! Drink his blood! to us now. Let's go, Kataro! And so our Kutaro was left to face Monkey's machinations alone. He's not alone. Some might say the mayor's eldritch <laughs> poor estate the made the perfect evil laboratory anyone, for General Monkey. The leave. more he settled in, the more unsettling the place got. Let's use Calibris to cut our way around. There's gotta be a way in. His sinister inventions patrolled every corner of the premises. The general trusted no one and operated all of these creations himself. And so our hero, Kutaro, set about slicing apart the evil General Monkey's laboratory like so much paper. Removing this blight on the town was a just act, motivated by justice, just the God. It's like a light switch. Balls of electricity, don't touch. Supports gone. The fourth story came crashing down. You okay there, Robo Chief? You don't look so hot. The evil monkey's abode. Ready for anything, the savior of Halloweeville stepped into the heart of the laboratory. Show yourself, monkey! Give us back those moonstone shards you stole! <laughs> but they are right in front of you, my dear! What? 
<laughs> you will help me test my new bodacious experiment. General Robodog, destroy Kotaro. <laughs> Acknowledged. Battery pen floated. General Dog? What happened to him? Go, go, Robo Dog. <laughs> General Monkey has omitted all of my primary function. Discharge ready. Commencing discharge. Yeah. 
dog had been tamed, and Kutaro was one moonstone shard the richer. But Monkey had slipped right through their fingers again. As for the consequences, well, how could Kutaro know? He was just a puppet, not the one pulling the strings. With a flash of Calibrus, Kutaro felled the frightful monster and freed the soul of every last child in the fiend's clutches. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Thanks to Kutaro, the shattered white moonstone was coming together piece by piece. Meanwhile, the witch, Esma Potts, who apparently had no qualms about holing up in another person's house, stood before Castle Waxwain's towering portrait of the moon goddess and said, Just you wait! Soon I will be the goddess! And the smile playing on her hideous lips gave way to a chilling laugh. Okay, where are you? Revisiblate yourself. You are my lord at once. <laughs> How could you fail me? You of all my generals. Your mistakes have cost me the other hand. If he gets the rest of the white moonstone, and he has Calibras. No, wait. I know who it is. Only Gudaro's three. What? Who? Tell me. Guiding Kutaro from there. That's what she thinks. I'll destroy them both. A bit and a petir. But how, sire? Simple. The clock tower in the land of time. Pick up, you useless pups! What are you waiting for? Yes, sir! Oh. Nothing like a spot of Copernican Artemisia to pass the afternoon. Yes, I can't tell whether it's the smooth, herbaceous flavor or the distinctive biscuity nose, but something about it does tickle my fancy. Who calls during tea time? No manners at all. Oh, uh, please, excuse me. A rabbit and rooster's never-ending tea party? Say again? Moon Barky? <gasps> Sire, Lord Master, yes, hello. I have a cue and the chicken taken over the land of time. That clock should have been fixed ages ago. <laughs> My word, Tempest Fugit. <laughs> Has it been three years? Time is running out, and you were supposed to catch it! <laughs> Never you fear your ISness, it is under control. That's right. We'll have that chronopoly for you in a macro jiffy. Move it! I want that clock to get ah! me right now! Oh, la 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 la! <laughs> oh, late, late, I am late! He looks shady. Let's tail him. Everyone and everything in the land of time was zipping along at a blistering pace. It was almost as if someone had put ants in the pants of time itself. And then all of a sudden the ants were all blotted. 
Even the buildings lining the street were recombobulating at breakneck speed, their heights changing like rippling waves. The sole exception was tea time. Oh, no, no, no. I must have doubt tealing her. Late, late, late. Hold it, Buster. You work for the Moonbear King. Oh, no, no, no. I must have doubt tealing her. Late, late, late. Hold it, Buster. You work for the Moonbear King. Yes! Stop distracting me, or he'll have my head! Well, that proves it! Come on! He's got a piece of the Moonstone! the land of time, post haste. Oh no! Oh, don't scare me! Okay, let's try that again. But this time, made it! Oh, look out! Whew, safe. Even the chimney sweeping seemed to be chronologically impaired. What a dumbness to the land of time. What should have been running like clockwork had been reduced to running in circles. The I must fix the clock. Jump! Again! Uh oh! We're out of buildings! Who needs rooftops when you have the playing cards? Demand, I shall traverse these precarious cards atop a unicycle. An enormous chimney loomed before, and at a loop sized chimney brush to match. Glad this isn't my house. Kutaro's search for General Rabbit had turned into a wild hopscotch across the land of time's rooftops. The flow of time has a pronounced effect on any city's skyline as the past is dismantled, the present constructed, and the future imagined. <laughs> Dreams and aspirations become the girders upon which life is built and rebuilt in the name of progress. It just usually happens a lot slower.
Like everything else around here, the shooting stars weren't exactly shooting straight. They'd lance across the sky one moment, only to stop dead in their tracks the next. Of course, it made it much easier to wish upon them. <laughs> you could probably sneak in multiple wishes. The locals were true romantics, peering through their telescopes and trying to count the stars as they blinked by, which took patience with all this chimney smoke in the way. Oh, he love my head for this. <laughs> yes, yes, sure as rabbit's feet are lucky. Like everything else around here, the layout of a house changes to its appropriate form with the passage of time. The larger the number of your family, the greater the number of rooms in your house. Then, of course, you no longer need the rooms if you no longer have your family. The house is too big. Without a family? What... what was wrong with me? What happened to you? Actually, I don't really want to hear that. established observatory where time was closely watched, a calendar devised, and the stars slid around to make it all work. A gravity magnetational temporal spatial anomaly. Yes, sir, this all seems correct. And right on schedule. Un, deux, trois, et voilà! Whoa! Into the wormhole and on to the Alcyon past. That hocus pocus loony! Don't let him get away! Time was a bit funny in here, but General Rabbit's highway of playing cards let him quite literally pass the hours. Hey, why are you stalking me? Don't play dumb. We're gonna beat you up and take back your Moonstone Shard. Follow that rabbit! Diamonds were a girl's best friend. A fair weather friend, maybe. 
The game would not start until Kutaro cut the deck. Bit by bit, sand drained into the hourglass. It was the future slipping away, piling up to form the past. Waiting is unfortunately part of the game, but a good card shark uses that time to plan his next move. What? You again? Oh, I am far too busy for this arasmo. I have this story to rewind, a land to conquer. Excuse me. Hey, get back here! Face Kataro fair and square! Our hero soon encountered everyone's favorite card trick, the buzzsaw. That's not a card trick! Kutaro laid all his cards on the table. This was it. A fine hat trick for Kutaro. This is our stop. I have to go back three whole years before I can fix that blasted clock. The ace trumps all, especially when it's five aces of spades. That's cheating! Kutaro hopped over the questionable hand and scrambled ever higher.
And now, the flying daggers. Sleep again. Shuffle. And again. Just one tap of this ordinary puppet and... Fretto Slito! Voila! Behold this! Uh, what's this for again? Shuffle and again. Sleep again. Just one tap of this ordinary top hat and presto slito. Voila! Leave again! Shuffle! And again! Behold this box! Soon be complete. Completely mine! And once I'm the goddess, this palace and all the moons shall obey my every command! Now, dear, the witch has finally cracked. Aha! Me buxom beauty Esma Potts. How ye shiver me timbers when you dance like that. Maybe we Whoa. all have. <laughs> Cut her all, find those last pieces. I'll fat her side, you suffer.
With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. No world is complete without a clock tower, and the moon is no exception. But the hands of this clock are not used to tell time. They are used to shape children's dreams. Light and dark decide if it's a quarter to a nightmare, or half past a daydream, or ten till a rude awakening. To keep a stern watch over the clock, the moon goddess had chosen Mr. Pink. But that was before. When the white moonstone shattered, the clock spun into madness, and Mr. Pink went missing. To bear or not to bear? Who is she, this witch who's after my moonstone? Why does she oppose me? She didn't have to steal Calibrus. She didn't have to pick on me like this! It's not fair! This is my Moonsies! Nobody else can have it! Not that mean witch! That awful hag! Whoever she is, she's mean and... and I hate her! Have I seen her somewhere? Yes, that would explain it. Who is she? Where have I met her before? Wait! Yes, Mika! Of course! You're done, Hag! Checkmate! Ha <laughs> Cushioning Kutaro's fall was a strange garden constructed like a maze. Primly precise hedges were prankishly preventing Kutaro's progression. Of course, Kutaro had prudent to come pre-equipped with the proper prudence. Really, I hope you're happy with yourself. I went through all that trouble to hide myself, but what's the point exactly? If you're gonna march into my garden and mercilessly slip away at my disguise, I might as well be wearing a lampshade. I mean, I'd probably itch less, not that you care. Uh, show a little gratitude? Kataro just, like, saved you. Do you have any idea who he is? Lost soul, rightful bearer of Calibrus, hero of the moon. Yes, yes, all very obvious, very clear to the naked eyes. But, you see, that's why I'm getting pernickety. You're being far too reckless. You probably ride your bicycle at night without a helmet. And do you really expect to defeat the moon bear king like that, really? But never mind, what's done is done. Milk spilt, not crying, moving on. Corrective measures can be taken. Proverbial mop for the proverbial dairy disaster, yes. Now, introductions. The names at Galahagrid, Mulberry, times are wasting. Goddess appointed Warden of the Land of Time, Clock Tower slash Watchman slash General Manager of what we call Dream Time, etc. ad infinitum. I know, lots of information to digest, probably didn't catch it. Just call me GMT. It's a pun. Clever, you see. Yeah, this is going right over your head, isn't it? Your mothers didn't read to you much, poor things. Forget it then. You can call me Mr. Pink. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Pink? Okay, so, like, why were you hiding in the bush again? Ah, must we go over every detail? Clock's ticking, sand trickling out of the hourglass, come on now! <sighs> Fine, here we go. Class is in session. Have a seat, or stand, or hover, whatever. Basically, this all started with dreams. The goddess, because she's rather smart, decided that there should be a certain parity, that means equality, in how we interact with children in their dreams. Which, of course, led to the construction of the clock tower, built by a watchmaker by the name of... Crying out loud! Can you just give us the abridged version? Oh, you talk faster than most sane people think, and we've got a lot to do. Shameful, simply lamentable, the attitude of our young people today, shrugging aside the weighty implications of their history and heritage, who demand the instant gratification, reading spoilers of movies they haven't yet seen, dreadful, this kind of rapid culture death, just give the moon back in the edge, you know? No, us dying of boredom will give him the edge. Come on, 
Don't tell me the great Mr. Pink doesn't know how to be concise. <laughs> oh, get with the times! You're a bird. Don't you know how to tweet? 140 characters or less. Go. That clock controls when children dream. Stop. Only I can operate it in the goddess's absence. Stop. I hid from at MBK to keep him from using it for evil. Stop. 140! Well done! So, the Moon Bear King is after your clock. Wait, what does he want with a clock? Can't he buy a watch? I'll have to explain that too. All right. 20 words or less. <sighs> He wants to permanently stop with the clock hands at midnight, but he needs me to do it. Right. That does sound bad. What happens if the hands stop at midnight? Dreamtime will be frozen at the darkest hour, never to flow again. In short... Yes, please. <laughs> If the Moon Bear King uses me to stop that clock, we're all... We're all... Kutaro dashed through the verdant labyrinth, <laughs> determined to free Mr. Pink from the diabolical General Rooster. Quickly, lad! You must emancipate me, uh, which, as you know, more or less derived from Latin, meaning deliver from the hands of Edes. You must free me from General Rooster's talons. Hey, it came to life. And thereby render me liberated. Yes. The now, land of time, uh, Topiary Garden, was a magical place. Uh, however... Hey, Gax, can't you oh. master? I am in trouble, you know. I mean, you've got stumpy appendages, but a bit of urgency ought to compensate for walking right. Now that you've already written me off as a disposable character. Yes, well, I have a few things to say about that. Oh, my gosh! Talk, talk, talk! Kataro's gonna ditch you if you don't stop polluting the air with your noise. Nobody likes a wise-cracking motor mouse who flies around and tells people what to do. Trust me, I deal with people like that all the time. I have a feeling our beloved audience knows exactly what Picarina is talking about. On through the verdant labyrinth, Kutaro dashed as Mr. Pink... What in blazes is taking so long? It's your fault I'm even in this predicament, you and your... Snip, 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 why don't I slice up Mr. Pink's disguise and ruin everything in this court? Yes! Kutaro found himself astride the Triceratops! Second only to the T-Rex of the Dinosaur Top 40! There's a Top 40? Have you got your ends and your means mixed Whoa. up? Whoa! It's right! And multiplied! The thing about triceratops is that they're hurry. hard to classify. Do you see what I did there? Scholars still argue about whether they're basically the same thing as the Torosaurus, which I think is just as silly. But then again, Alas, oh the twisted topiary topography was like making Mr. Pink's Promise rescue me. rather difficult. Have a spot of tea, hun. In fact, have the whole leopard. Don't be ridiculous. Leopard spots aren't made of tea. They're made of a... Kutaro found himself an unwilling guest at General Rooster's afternoon tea. But there was no time to sit back and nibble on pastries. He had to leap from table to table just to keep up with his host. Go on! Don't let the tea get cold. You have all the time in the world. Oh, yeah. Huh. Kutaro sheared a path along General Rooster's trail of feathers and moved to the next table. It's important for these sorts of functions to make the rounds and socialize a bit. One can't be rude and keep to oneself. Biscuits and fruit, cold cuts and scones. It all looked scrumptious. But a party is more than just eating. Didn't we already come this way? Oh. 
Remember, it's proper to give up your seats for the elderly and people who need them. Yeah, I'm not so sure my grandma would want this chair. Ooh, let's go right. That pipe looks so yummy. Jump, jump! Maybe the left would have been easier. General Rooster flapped away disdainfully every time Kutaro got close. But the trail of feathers was leading our hero ever closer to the clock tower. Kutaro's wild rooster chase had led him to Mr. Pink's place of employment, one magical clock tower at the heart of the land of time. The insides of the tower were stuffed with enormous, intricate gears. Do they really need this many? The gears mesh together in order to transmit torque. You see, they're finely tuned to make sure that the hour and minute hands of the clock rotate at steady, accurate pace. Also, they make convenient footholds. of time's clock used a magic pendulum which always kept perfect time and never had to be wound. It was scientific perfection. You just said it was magic. I'm just trying to create a little atmosphere, all right? If you want to be strange, go ahead and put every little story detail under a microscope, really. Our stately exterior was lavishly decorated, which worked out well for Kutaro, who needed a path to the top. Rooster's tail as the general tried to fly out of reach. You nasty little thing. Why won't you fall? Ah, my babies! You little jerk! Every egg of mine you smash, I'll smash back on you tenfold!
Bougereau thrust his way past the endless machinery that worked tirelessly to keep time. Kutaro's innate sense of rhythm allowed him to cut his way safely past the obstacle. Yes, we're through! Oh, look at the pretty weedy box! After a long clamber, Kutaro had finally reached the top of the clock tower. Hey! Sitter hero, I'm up here! He's been turned into a clock hand. Save me, please, before the clock strikes twelve! Your time is up, Kutaro. Soon this world will be plunged into eternal starkness. I hope you mean eternal darkness. Don't, you cowardly chicken! ever closer to midnight. If Kutaro didn't hurry, the crazed Chanticleer wouldn't be the half of his problems. Stop messing about, you fool! Did Calibrus choose you or not? Undo the ropes that are binding me! How can we... Ah! Ah! just a few tick-tocks away from the sinister stroke of twelve. Only brave Kutaro could avert the impending crisis. <laughs> We're doomed! Midnight is upon us! There is no hope! The world will end! I should never have put my faith in a couple of... Shut up! We're gonna save you, so just chill out, okay? That's what you think! <laughs> the proverbial gloves are hot! Control, check. Nice job, Kitaro. 
Hello? What are you doing? I'm over here. W would you help me, please? Thank you. <laughs> Hold on. We're coming. <laughs> oh, no. uh, wrong oh, again. No. <laughs> Come on, help me, please. No! <laughs> what? No, you can't. <laughs> Monkey saw his chance and seized it. As the clock struck 12, Dreamtime lurched into its darkest, most terrifying hour. Kotaro, look! The Earth! <laughs> you see, Kotaro! Now children in everywhere will be locked in an inescapable nightmare! Their souls will be ripe for the harvest! They will make my master invincible! <laughs> Dragon! Come forth! Open the gateway to Earth! Bring me those children's souls. Kutaro's victory over Rooster felt empty. He should have known Monkey wouldn't play fair. And now that the damage was done, he was powerless to stop the long night to come. Even in the land of time, there was no changing the past. With the help of Calibrus, Kuturo defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kuturo! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Dragon had been called forth from his celestial roost to bring judgment down upon all who dared to defy his ruthless master. And it was none other than Dragon who spirited away the souls of children each night on the tyrant's behalf. That's right. Dragon was part of the reason Kutaro got dragged into this mess in the first place. But now... The stakes were much higher. The souls of every last boy and girl on Earth. Having parted the heavens and opened a portal to Earth, Dragon set to work harvesting the souls of children from the coils of their nightmares. Dragon! Bring me those souls right now! <laughs> If the Moon Bear King devours all those, we'll have a disaster on our hands! Not only will I not rule the Moon, he'll rule the whole dark universe! Come on, Kutaro! Hop to it! Stop that monster! Whoosh! Kutaro watched Dragon soar off with a host of children's souls in his wake. <laughs> With Picarina at his side, Kutaro hopped the stride the newly emancipated Mr. Pink and raced after General Dragon. By some miracle... Hold on! Dark clouds hung heavy over the Black Castle as General Dragon hurtled home as fast as he could. Mr. Pink skimmed along the dragon's back as Kutaro held on tight. Uh, I suppose now would be a good time to lay down the facts. Well, there's nothing to lay them on, but metaphorically speaking, you see, I'm primarily an academic. I look after a big clock for a living. Oh, man, if I knew spicy food would shut him up, I would have ordered some buffalo wings hours ago. Dashingly, Mr. Pink leapt over Dragon's blade-like fingers. Boats of lightning struck and missed. Storm clouds shocked in vain. Nothing could stop them as they raced up the riding dragon's back to the heavens. Use the balloon to jump! 
Mr. Pink flapped so hard, his wings looked ready to snap. Whence came this passion? Was it rage toward the Moonbear King for using him as a clock hand? Was it a sense of justice, a need to undo his mistakes? Well, it's damnable bad luck is what it is. What do you mean by mistakes? I'm not the one who broke the clock. Besides, the warranty ran out ages ago. That's right! Damn the lightning death that was raining down on him. Mr. Pink was determined to set things right. Yeah, that's not what I said. Don't fabricate stories. General Jack tore across the sky with his sinister prize in tow. Soon, he would deliver all these children to his master. Harry, you want the Moonbear King to gobble up the soul of every last kid on Earth? You say Harry like I'm not a friendly Harry, which I am, by the way, but I am a flamingo in case you haven't had this. Mr. Pink's body coursed with the hot, holy justice of Capsaicin. The bird's heart and muscles swelled with new purpose after every massive, every kick. A cyclone tossed Kutaro into the path of lightning and rain, but these and more he cut in twain. Either the Clock Tower disaster or General Dragon's own power had triggered a great cataclysm. Volcanoes exploded in a salvo of magma destruction as fireballs rained down from above. Time for death! Incoming! Kutaro picked up speed, bounded along the balloons, walking right through the eruption. Don't I get any credit? Our hero sliced through rain and dodged bolts of lightning as he tamed the vicious storm. Dragon's trunk was coiled around the clouds like a snake's. Meanwhile, the volcanoes had taken things up a notch. Fiery boulders smashed apart the clouds. It seemed as though General Dragon's body stretched on forever. How are we going to catch him with all this junk in the way? <laughs> Eruption had grown so intense, it seemed the whole sky might soon be snuffed out. Oh, we gotta improvise. Kataro, just start hacking off pieces of dragon. That's it. Love it. Clean up. Only one. Once Kutaro had done a little surgery, did the proud and powerful dragon finally give Did you seriously him a just cut off my tail? Tell me you didn't just cut off my tail, because that is just... Don't even make me spell out the dookie you're in right now! Just smash you instead. That's it. Almost there. Our 
hero dodged searing balls of fire and danced between dragons' razor-sharp scales as they battled atop the cloud. through Dragon's thunder clouds as he raced across the ether. This is my sky! My clouds! You don't get to be a wise guy with me! Oh, great! Now we've upgraded to full-on dragon breath.
trunk where like that came from. for some heart. You wiggly rats, you're dead meat. This guy's a train rat. Just a little more. Kujiro clipped through clouds and lunged over lightning bolts. He Look out for the gap in the clouds. You've got a Take a fall. I'll knock that head clean off your shoulder. You're trapped, Katoro. The only way out is up. Where are you going? Oh, he's after us! Slap him, Kataro! You smart Alec! I'm just getting started! Let's see if those scissors you used against my pals can smoke a dragon! Die! Ah! Oh, so you want some juice? That what you want? Add some of this! What? Hold still, Pipsquish! Ah! You... you fight good! But I ain't giving up my piece of the boss's moonstone. Not to nobody! You can kiss the earth! And your little adventure! Goodbye! Hold it right there! I've had enough of your bullying and that stupid accent! Don't you make me go full Picarina on you! Kotaro, you may be from Earth, but you're our hero! I know you can win! You can beat us! Kid, let's settle this like men! The Dragon Man, bring it on! You got me. After an epic battle, the wicked dragon had been slain, and the souls of the children were free once again. Katoro! Another piece of the puzzle! <laughs> Just one more sword! And Monkey's business is no match for ours. Hey! Wait just a solar second! We beat Dragon! What gives? You're too late! All you did was ensure the gateway between the Earth and Moon stays open! Now, I need only wait. <laughs> Soon, the Moonware King would possess a more terrible power than ever. But Kataro risked everything to stop the dragon. It can't have been for nothing. No, it's too soon to give up. We've still got the Moon Goddess. If we put the Moonstone back together, we can bring her back too. And with her on our side, that half-baked grizzly is toast. We've got to stay positive. Let's go find Monkey and make him cough up that last piece. That's right. You'll get your goddess. Now would you just hurry up? Goddess or no goddess, the tyrant's too strong now. If we get the moonstone back, Mew should send Kutaro home where he belongs. Don't be crazy. Why would I ever do that? Kutaro is our last hope, especially mine. Ah! 
Stone shard to go. Kutura was certainly on a road, but with the witch in the tyrant's clutches and the power of countless souls at stake, it seemed the rolling would be uphill from here on out. With the help of Calibrus, Kuturo defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kuturo! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Hot on General Monkey's heels, Kutaro and Picarina stumbled into a steep, snowy mess of peaks called the Mean Moon Mountains. The last Moonstone Shard was all Kutaro needed to free his soul from its puppet prison and return to his home down on Earth. But our hero remained troubled as he climbed. He knew General Dragon and that clock had given the Moon Bear King control over every last child's soul. As Jack Frost nipped at the boy's fingers and toes, a cold and unshakable suspicion was starting to tug at his heart. Wait, Your Highness, this is all a terrible mistake. <laughs> Did I mention your fur looks especially lustrous today? Spare me the theatrics. I know exactly who you are. Uh, then get your grimy paws off me, Cappy! You thought you could pull a fast one on me, eh, Granny? But you were wrong! Once I've slurped down every last soul of every child on Earth, no moon goddess, not even the sun, will be able to stop me! Kutaro <laughs> still can! Calibrus chose him for a reason! The power of the four champions will see him through to his final task! <laughs> He's going to restore the White Moonstone and bring light back to this realm, you poor stupid bear! I can't wait to watch it knock the stuffing out of you! Bring it on, Kutaro! Bring it down, Kutaro! <laughs> you will never complete that Moonstone, boy! Never! Stand and fight, you coward! At the very first glimpse of Kutaro, General Monkey ran as fast as his legs would take him. I wonder if those icicles will fall. Careful you don't slip on the icy patches. Whoa! What is that? Uh, sure is wobbly. I hope it doesn't collapse. Oh, I hate high places. But you can fly. Whoa! Watch your step. We've got slippage. Yeah, just stay calm, dear. Slow and steady wins the race. No, it doesn't! More Yeti! These guys are sound sleepers. Well, who says Yeti? Yeti can't hibernate. Thank you. 
That's me! <laughs> With each passing moment, the Moonbear King's power increased. The mountain was a stubborn, snowy sentinel, but Kutaro forced himself to trudge on. He had to complete the White Moonstone. He just the tunnel had buried to. in snow! Ugh, darn that monkey! General Monkey was a crafty one. He knew he didn't have to fight Kutaro. He'd already won, just so long as he kept the last Moonstone Shard out of reach. In the end, it wasn't brute strength or poison, but ingenuity that was giving Kutaro the most trouble. As Kutaro climbed higher, the snow quickly turned to a blizzard. Snowballs, great and small, began tumbling down the slope. A gift from Monkey? Who knows? probably thought Christmas trees, stockings, and presents were an earth thing. <laughs> they didn't finish decorating the tree. Lame. A world of white stretched as far as the eye could see, but there was still no sign of General Monkey. General Monkey's down escalator only went in one direction. Down. Into the abyss. Find it, Kataro! Keep climbing! Uh, uh, is that a... Uh, Stop it! Don't even start! Just 
Kutaro followed General Monkey right into the icy moor at the mountain's peak. Say your prayers, Ace Face. Ah, careful! Check it out! Not even Monkey can outrun us now. A new challenger has appeared. Don't you let him win. Poor Kutaro just wasn't able to catch any air. Hey, what's on your six? Jump! That was close. What the? Oh my gosh! Splash! Oh, that's gotta hurt. Our heroes tumbled from the frigid peak into a scorching volcanic crater. Extreme! over ten times the boiling point of water. A wooden puppet would be vaporized instantly. Huh? Keep moving! Kutaro weaved his way through the bursts of hot magic. secret volcanic base designed to hide the secret rocket. I mean, what self-respecting, but gravity was no match for Kutaro as he sheared through the stratosphere and up into outer space. Well, that's all she wrote. We're stuck here forever. This looks like fun. Can I play? Do we look like we're playing? Wait, Ying Yang. How'd you get up here? Forget that. The witch has been snatched by the Moon Bear King. You have to save her. Save her? <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would we? She was gunning for the Moonstone right from the start. At least now, she won't get in the way of reviving the goddess and sending Kataro home. You know, I think you're missing the litter box for the droppings. Hey, we've got two things to worry about. An ugly monkey and the Moonstone. Is the witch on that list? No! Now help us! Fine, but hurry up and choose your transportation. You've got a monkey to pursue. All right, I'll pick. <laughs> is the best. Okay, all set. Gotcha now, monkey. We'll chase you out to the ends of the universe. Good for you. I think this calls for a very special reward. Octopuses! Space octopuses! 
Uh, actually, they're Martians. Oh, they're hideous! Why are we always surrounded by ugly people? On behalf of the Magical Theater, I would just like to apologize to all our guests for that completely inappropriate comment. I wasn't talking about... Kutaro had reached the asteroid belt. But that's strange. Isn't it supposed to be between Mars and Jupiter? Hello, Land of Dreams! Let's be a little flexible here, all right? Oh, would you just surrender already? Surrender this! <laughs> uh, there are no ups and downs in outer space, only gravity. You might even say there's no such thing as left, right, forwards, backwards, yesterday, or indeed tomorrow. It's squid! Martian squid! Uh, no, no. Octopi are from Mars, but squid are from Venus. Welcome to the Warp Zone. Whoa! So dramatic! When Kutaro and Picarina were done warping, they re-emerged in a spaceship graveyard. These marvels of science and intellect had been mangled by destiny into mere shadows. Ew! Uh, more Martian and Venus, or Venusian. Uh, even their name is ugly. They're lost in space. Have some compassion. I'd get lost too if I was that gross. The space-time continuum probably bent just to avoid touching them. Wait, so down is up and up is down. Aren't we gonna confuse the audience like this? All of our honored guests are encouraged to sit upside down as required to follow along. Uh-huh. Warp engaged! Asteroid belt shall become the belt of your graves. <laughs> Says the monkey, too scared to stand and fight. Okay, we're almost caught up. It's okay, Scorpio. Let that aggression out. Scorpio's rocking the scissors, too. Circles, cancer. Heads up, Virgo! Explosive developments await. Now's your chance, Leo. Go ahead and pounce that boy. Charles! 
take you the long way, Aquarius, but you'll get where you need to be. Go on, Pisces. Dare to be twisted. When life gets hard, Captain Born, remember to cut yourself a break. Keep it real, Sagittarius, because he's about to fall for your arrows. Big time. Taurus! We're done! The last moonstone shot! It's our own, we did it! Can you believe it? Now we just have to... fall down! Daddy! Picarina! Butts is not princess talk, young lady. Look at you, my only child, a pixie. Don't worry, I love you all the same. It was the moon bear. Bad game. monkey! He cast a spell? I told you to let the moon work out its own kinks. But did you listen? Okay, no, but I was I worried about you. the moon goddess. She's always been so no. sweet to me, you know? Yes, well, she had it coming. I warned her, beware the dark side of the moon. Never turn your back on the shadows. But no, I want a balance. Light and dark and equal shares. Yeah, that works. But Daddy, me and Kataro have worked so hard to find the Moonstone Shard. Galactic issues, sweetie. Not fair to pin it on one kid. I know, I know. Tell you what. I'll go have a word with this moon bear. Rough him up a little, then save the goddess. How's that? Sound good? Oh, Daddy, that would be solar. Yeehaw! <laughs> Ew, ow, oh, ah, oh. Daddy? We'll find another moon, honey. <laughs> well, you're no help. Fine, we'll take care of it. Come on, Kataro. And so, with newfound courage, Kutaro and Picarina descended from the brilliant center of the galaxy to once again face the dark terrors of the moon. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Well, Kutaro's relunization kicked off with a horrific sight. The beautiful Castle Waxwain had been bound curtain and keep by Castle Grizzlestein's vile vines, anchored to the moon like a swan in the death squeeze of a thousand vipers. Even now, an army of grubs was making ready to storm the goddess's Argent Palace and bring it down. Thanks to their convenient solar staircase, Kutaro and Picarina were back on moon soil. Oh no! The White Castle! They won't be able to hold out much longer! We need to revive the goddess, like, right now! So, uh, any ideas? You think we need some kind of lunar super glue? And the only thing I like better than power is more power! Not even the sun can touch me now! But it's not enough. I need more. Give me all the power! Kutaro! You have to! <laughs> Are you two all right? Yin Yang! Did you procure the last Moonstone Shard? Of course. But I wish these things came with an instruction manual. What for? It'd be written in your language anyway. Just get to the palace before it collapses. It's our only hope. 
the moment of truth was upon them. Would they manage to unhumpty dumptify the Moonstone? And would the goddess really return to them if they Kutaro and Picarina had reached the roots of the vile vines entangling the White Castle. The duo climbed as fast as they could. They had to reach Waxwain before it collapsed. Oh! The monstrous vines blocked Kutaro's every move, as if they had a will of their own. Striker, aka the Bear Striker. Oh, 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 would you look at that mobility of supple wings, the beauty of us. Get a room with it, why don't you? We're trying to shoot it down. You see a work of art, and all you think about, the death ray dealing foul flowers were clad in armor as thick as a Kuma One tank. again. A whole squadron. Look at that perfect formation. Ah, here come the Barrow Brothers. Oh, that's great. We're gonna need every tool in the box. Sit you, sit you, Kutaro. Proceed to point whiskey, whiskey on the double, double. Over, over. Oh no! Jumping Jehoshaphat! The bear strikers are going down! We have to salvage the aircraft! What is wrong with you? What? Can't we just peace? Maybe you. At last, Kutaro had reached the base of the White Castle. But how much castle was left? into the halls of Waxway. There wasn't much time. Just make a break for the top. We have to put the Moonstone back together. All at once, the Moonstone shot began to grow. Maybe we're supposed to plug them in like this. Okay, let's do the other 11. Oh my gosh! Look at the kitty cat.
Restored until light reached the heart of the castle. A baby dragon! Whoa! All the orthodox part of the picture's missing. Did we forget something? Oh, what now? Ew! Not again! But this one's out of reach! What do we do? Let's go take it down. Valiantly, Kutaro traced the vile vines to their roots at the heart of the castle. Ugh, this is just plain nasty. Anyone can grow vile vines at home. Just leave them in dark places with plenty of moisture. Uh, we're trapped! The floor's wobbly. Maybe oops. Gonna have to try oops. Gonna have to try it from higher up. special care when transplanted. Nicking the bombs with scissors, for example, would be most... The light's getting stronger! I bet they took care of the vines upstairs.
animal children's playroom. At least until the vile vines got to it and turned it into the most depressing amusement park ever. Let's take him out and play on the merry-go-round! Fortunately, vile vines are able to regenerate as long as one of their two vines remains in attack. So, if you love your vile vines, make absolutely certain not to damage that other bulb.
at last, the vile vines, lord of all things botanical, had been vanquished by Kutare. The Moonstone's big moment was just over. Despite the Moon Bear King's counter schemes, the Moonstone was about to be made whole again. Kataro! <sighs> White Moonstone's pure light was restored, and it rained down upon the moon as power surged back into Castle Waxway. And there was hope. What's happening to me? Did Kutaro finally... Wait! I remember now! It's me! I am me! My lovely little bear, I have returned, and your machinations must be stopped. The balance must be restored. You wish. Ah! Let me out of here! No! I command it! <laughs> mirror, mirror of the wall. Who's the toughest guy of all? You know who the strongest is. Kutaro! <laughs> <laughs> With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Ah, fate. As the forces of light and darkness said Marco, what could the moon say but Polo? The bitter struggle for power between the shimmering castle Waxway and the shadowy castle Grizzlestein had reached a healthy boil. Hero and Tyrant would soon have their final showdown. At stake were not just one boy's fate, but the fate of the whole moon and the earth and the sun and galaxy and... Well, let's just say he better not mess up. Now it just so happens, Kutaro and Picarina weren't the only ones who had refused to give up on the White Castle. A battle be brewing, me hearties! Man the long toms! Raise those mizzen masts! Look alive, me buckos! There be no getting the Davies now! Aim for the Black Castle! Where be my coxswain? Yin Yang! Faster! Put your back in it! Hi, hi, Captain. Me buxom beauty Esma Potts has need of her able seamen. Fire! Fire! Thanks to Kutaro, the White Castle had been restored. And now the stage was set for their epic clash with Castle Grizzlestein. Blimey, that firepower! Kudra oh me lad! Why haven't you stormed the enemy vessel? <laughs> you're the pirate! Ugh, alright, fine, we'll do it, since you're obviously not gonna. Handsomely no! <laughs> Trajectory locked! Fire! <laughs> Sail straight and true, me lad! The moon needs you, me bucko! Kutaro busted right into the Black Castle's drive chamber. Destroying this section ought to stop Grizzlestein in its tracks. Careful if you don't want to be a pancake!
further into the black castle they wandered, the bigger the gear they seemed to get. Was the castle itself resisting them? What's the hold up, lad? We can't take much more of this! It's not our fault we're stuck at a stoplight. He had to destroy this massive gear and bring the castle to a screeching halt. Time to celebrate. Trajectory locked! Fire! And off our hero glasses toward his grisly, grizzly target. That smokestack looks like a way in. And sure enough, the smokestack led right into the engine. It took the fire and brimstone sort of fire to keep this castle stoked. Kuduro jumped over to the cylinders and cut through the belches of smoke. used trolleys to transport fuel. Kuzuro slid down the trolley rails. And narrowly avoids a messy accident.
Didn't we burn enough calories in X5? Kuturo had Ow! finally reached the Don't heart of Castle Grimmelstown. out and yet another cannon toward his third Black Castle invasion. He was starting to feel right at home. Sky High. That's it. Keep it up. Kataro, careful. Your footy. Almost there. 
was just a sneeze away from a massive explosion. Were Kuturo and Picarina going to make it? Castle Waxwain's fusillades and Kuturo's own efforts, the Black Castle had finally screeched to a halt. Its ramparts ruptured and Bailey's blazed, and the victors' cheering echoed through its dying hall. Woo! But hold on! The Moonbear King is still in there! We have to finish him off or the children will never get their souls back. And Kutaro, neither will you! So you destroyed my castle. Big deal. Who needs a castle when I am already invincible? Poor oh, little bear. You are in no position to pity me. I am all powerful. And what does that achieve? It won't fill the emptiness in your heart. You have no friends you trust, no family to love, no subjects who love you back. You're still just the lonely little bear you've always been. Power changes nothing. I don't need love. My subjects and soldiers, and the people of the moon and the children of the earth, serve just one purpose. To feed my hunger. Ah! Ah! That's cheating! Now, Kutaro had done a lot of growing up during his journey, but the tyrant had just one-upped him in a big way. And unfortunately, it is mathematically proven that nastiness is directly proportional to body mass. Once again, the Moonbear King looms before our hero. His sheer size alone puts small mountains to shame. I'll devour the whole moon if that's what it takes to get rid of you worms. How are we supposed to face him like this? Cheeky little one! Oh, I 
know what you're thinking, but it won't work. Actually, I'm pretty sure it will. I won't leave any shoulders for a head to sit on. for a head to sit on. Quote, all powerful tyrant was getting taken apart at the seams by Calibrus. Soul after soul slipped out of his stomach. That's it! Keep it up! Uh. Well, you give up? No, not until. I devour everything!
Thank you, Kuturo. You were very brave. Ah. Ahoy! Where be me fair Esma? Right here, Romeo. What? Ah, ah, no! Ah. The Mune Witch, Esma Potts, is really the Mune Goddess. Didn't we go over this? <gasps> no, you mangy feline, we didn't! Well, it's your fault for not asking. When the Moonstone was shattered, my memories and powers were jumbled, and I was transformed. Captain Gaff, I shall never forget your kind attentions. Soften me, Timber! The one perfect beauty in this hideous world! Gone! <laughs> All be darkness! Ah! I'm not done with you yet. I don't need a power. What are you doing? Uh, what's the meaning of this? Do you I... want to be my friend? <laughs> really? You're oh, lying! Oh, oh. I will not be mocked if you're really my friend. You can stay here forever. You are. <laughs> Kutaro, get the Black Moonstone from Little Bear. We have to set things right again. Little Bear, that power is too much for you. Give it back. But without this, I'm nothing. I'd... I'd just be me. Would you still be my friend? Pals to the bitter end. Oh, Kutaro. And so the two Moonstones were joined together, light and shadow waxing and waning in balance, the way the night sky had always meant them to. Don't fret one, little head. You have grown to a hundred times the boy you used to be. So big is your soul that your old head would hardly fit. Quite right. <laughs> uh, Kutaro, how will we stay friends if you're going far, far away? Hush now, little bear. You have a friendship, and that is a ship that can sail anywhere. Once tight, always tight. <laughs> um, We'll always be friends, even the goddess. <laughs> hmm. Really? I must remain impartial. I suppose she'd rather consort with stuffed animals in her magic castle. Poor thing. I heard that. And so Kutaro's journey to save the moon came to a grand and joyous conclusion. Yeah! Come back to me, Esma Potts, flower of the moon. Would that I could pluck you again. Davy Jones, take me. Me world be hellfire! For most of the party's concerned.